Chapter 141 Shield Captain America and Tony, who were originally in Tony's company, discussed how to investigate the internal problems of Shield. But before they discussed the reason, an agent from SHILD suddenly came and said that Fury had made a new discovery, so he asked them to go there. But when Captain America and Tony came to SHILDS building, they both felt something was wrong. Tony, don't you think something is wrong? Yes. Both Tony and Captain America are superheroes, and they are the kind of people with exceptionally sensitive intuition. As soon as they entered the SHILD building at this moment, they felt a different atmosphere, as if someone was spying on them from the dark, which made both of them immediately alert. You two are joking. This is SHILD. What could be wrong? The SHILD agent who went to look for the two immediately showed a smile in the face of the two's speculation, and then tried to dispel the doubts of the two with a gentle face. The two did not respond to this, but still scanned the surroundings left and right. Seeing this, the agent didn't say much, but went straight to the elevator, pressed the button for going upstairs, and then waited at the elevator entrance. Tony and Captain America saw that there seemed to be nothing wrong with this agent, and then looked around. They were all SHILD agents coming and going, and even came to the two of them deliberately, and looked at them quietly. It looked like they were fans of the two, which made Tony and Captain America couldn't help but feel puzzled. Could it be that I was thinking too much? In fact, there is nothing wrong with S.H.I.E.L.D. Just thinking about it, the elevator arrived. Tony and Captain America immediately stared at the elevator with vigilance, always watching out for possible killers in the elevator. Beep! But as the elevator door slowly opened, there was nothing inside. It's just a normal elevator. Seeing this scene, the two looked at each other and saw a trace of doubt and relief in each other's eyes. Since there is no ambush here, it should be really no problem. All of this is because they thought too much, maybe because of the previous conflict with Fury, the two of them have a bit of a shadow, right? Thinking of this, both of them breathed a sigh of relief. Then he went straight to the elevator. When Captain America was about to reach out and press the elevator to go to the chief's office on the top floor, he found that the agent who brought him and others did not get on the elevator, but stood at the elevator door. He looked at them strangely. Something is wrong. An ominous premonition suddenly emerged from the bottom of Captain America's heart, and it even made him a little uneasy. At the moment, the door of the elevator was slowly closing, and the agent also said slowly to Captain America, Goodbye, Captain America, H-Y-D-R-A hail. Tony, it's Hydra. Captain America only had time to turn his head and yell at Tony before the elevator door was completely closed. And at this time, outside the elevator, Looking at Captain America and Tony who had been locked in the elevator, the agent and those around him all showed strange smiles. I didn't expect to be able to fool Captain America and Tony, these two famous superheroes, so easily. After all, Captain America is just an old antique from the last century, and Tony is a dude, superhero. They are just idiots and trash pushed to the altar by a group of ignorant fools. This elevator has been modified. As long as the door is closed, the temperature inside will rise sharply. It is estimated that it is over a thousand degrees now. When the door is reopened in a while, these two people must have been burned to ashes. These HYDRA agents all gathered at the elevator door and waited expectantly for the elevator door to open for a moment. You must know that Captain America is their old opponent of HYDRA. It is written that Hydra has been fighting each other for a long time. It can even be said that they are the number one enemy of HYDRA. Even the founder of HYDRA, Red Skull, disappeared because of Captain America. It is precisely because of this that almost every member of Hydra hopes to solve Captain America with his own hands. This is not to say how much loyalty to HYDRA, how much resentment to Captain America, but because killing Captain America with his own hands, he will get huge amounts of rewards and credits. This is what they most dream of. That's why this agent couldn't restrain the joy in his heart and exposed his identity after Captain America and the others entered the elevator because he knows how much benefit he will get once he solves Captain America. The other agents are also aware of this, so they fawned on this agent one after another. Almost everyone thought Captain America and Tony were dead. After all, it is an incinerator with a high temperature of thousands of degrees. After entering here, it is no different from entering the crematorium. There is only one death awaiting Captain America and Tony. Beep, amidst the discussion among the crowd, the elevator came to the bottom floor, but it did not open. This made everyone look puzzled. Is this broken? Why isn't it opened? I don't know, but this was maintained by us some time ago. Shouldn't this happen? All the organs in the SHILD building are designed by HYDRA. 
They even know everything about SHILD better than Director Fury. Where is there a mechanism that can kill the enemy? Where is it possible to block the enemy? Where there are traps? And where there are no traps? They are clear about these things, so they can plan such a perfect killing plan in their opinion. It's just that the current plan seems to be a little bit wrong. Looking at the elevator door that has not been opened for a long time, the hearts of everyone in Hydra are also suspended. They always feel that something unexpected will happen. But when I think about it carefully, I feel that this kind of thing should not happen. After all, it is a high temperature of thousands of degrees. How could there be any problems? Even if it is a stone to enter, it is obviously necessary to be familiar with it, let alone two big living people. With this in mind, they waited and waited. But he still didn't see the result he wanted. Instead, there was a loud noise in the elevator in front of him. Immediately, everyone saw that the elevator in front of them was smashed out of a big hole, followed by the second and the third. Looking at these protruding pits, everyone subconsciously retreated. There was worry in their eyes, and his heart was full of fear. Impossible? The agent who tricked Captain America and Tony into the elevator before was even more terrified at this moment, unable to believe his eyes at all. This is a high temperature of thousands of degrees. How can they still be alive? However, nothing is impossible in this world. Boom. Despite another bang, a corner of Captain America's iconic shield has smashed a hole through the thick elevator door. Then Captain America grabbed the big hole with both hands and tore it sideways. The heavy elevator door, like a piece of paper, was torn in half by Captain America. A wave of heat hit the face along with the big hole caused by Captain America, but Captain America didn't respond at all. Only his face was slightly red. But the others were different. Facing the scorching heat wave, they all immediately hid aside. After the heat wave rushed out of the elevator, it directly ignited the waste paper on the trash can outside. Its high temperature can be seen, but it is precisely because of this that they cannot understand. Even though the temperature is already so high, why didn't Captain America and Tony be cooked? Even Captain America has a super soldier serum that can withstand the heat. But what about Tony? He's just a normal guy. Why is he still okay? But soon they will know. After Captain America tore open the elevator door, he strode out. And behind him is Tony. It's just that Tony has uploaded his Iron Man suit at this moment. I obviously didn't see you carrying this armor. How is this possible? Looking at Tony who had completed the costume change, the agent who had lured them before said with a puzzled and puzzled face, with the four characters of Unbelievable written all over his face. Fortunately, I treated the fifth generation of Mark to resist high temperature. If it wasn't really finished, there would be such a trap inside SHILD. Isn't this too dangerous? Tony said as he walked out of the elevator. Then watching the Hydra agent with an unbelievable face raised his right hand. The arc pulse gun was ready to go. Simple, because my Mark V made a suitcase look. Suitcase? Hearing this, the Hydra agent finally reacted. As if he did vaguely remember that Tony had indeed carried a suitcase when he followed them. I didn't care about it at first thinking that it was a simple suitcase, which might contain some weapons, such as two pistols or something. This is normal, after all, they are already superheroes, and it is reasonable to carry two pistols with them. But now he realized that it was not an ordinary suitcase at all. It's Tony's Iron Man armor. But such a huge amount of armor can be packed in a small suitcase. What kind of black technology is this? This is why Tony is so proud. In the Marvel Universe, there may be no one who can compete with Tony in the development of energy and individual weapons. At least at this time, it must not exist on Earth. This is why Tony looks down on other people and treats everyone with a look of disdain. Goodbye then. Tony looked at this person and said something lightly and then fired the arc pulse gun directly in his hand to kill this person on the spot. At first I thought Hydra was just lurking in SHILD, but now it seems that the entire SHILD in New York has become Hydra's lair. Captain America looked at these Hydra agents who looked at him in horror. In his eyes, these Hydra agents are all damned existences. As a superhero who has struggled with Hydra for many years, Captain America knows exactly what kind of organization Hydra is. They are a bunch of inhuman beasts. Once you meet these Hydra people, the most direct and effective way is to send them to see God. So when he saw that the entire SHILD seemed to be occupied by these Hydra agents, his 870 face was full of anger and disgust. And these Hydra agents also reacted immediately after a brief surprise. They took up their weapons and aimed at Captain America and the others. A hail of bullets hit our faces, as if it was raining continuously. But this kind of scene is very important for Captain America and as far as Tony was concerned, 
It was really just a drizzle, with no deterrent effect at all. Captain America just stood up his shield to block the bullets. And Tony didn't care about these bullets at all, letting the bullets fall on him. Sparks flew all over Tony for a moment, but the bullets didn't even scratch the paint on Tony's Iron Man armor. No trace was left at all. Instead, Tony directly walked towards the people of Hydra step by step against the bullets. Seeing Tony getting closer, Hydra's agents also stepped up their firepower and even took out their rifles and submachine guns directly, trying to sell Tony. But it was of no use at all. Bullets fell at Tony's feet one after another, but Tony was still moving forward and soon came to them. As soon as the arc pulse gun blasted out, several people were all blown away, and it was unknown whether they were alive or dead. Immediately afterwards, Captain America also held up the shield, rushed up against the shooting of these people, knocked them all into the air, rolled and crawled on the ground, and passed out on the spot past. No matter how powerful these dual agents of SHILD and Hydra are, they are just ordinary people after all. In the face of the two superheroes Captain America and Tony, it is somewhat powerless. However, as the commotion downstairs between Captain America and Tony grew louder, the Hydra agents in the entire building were alarmed. They were originally waiting to kill Captain America and Tony, but now that there was such a big commotion, they naturally realized immediately that their plan had been exposed. Therefore, these Hydra agents started to act one after another, surrounded Captain America Tony, and all the organs of the entire SHILD building were activated. At the moment, the SHILD building was completely turned into a murder weapon. At the same time, two humanoid creatures who are obviously not from Earth also came outside the SHILD building and watched the chaos inside. This is the SHILD that the Master asked us to assist? I didn't expect it to become such a mess. Ebony Maul watched this scene. Deng even walked up, and Gamora followed closely behind. They all came here to assist SHILD and become a member of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now is a good time for them to show their talents. The End Chapter 142 Captain America and Tony The two of them were like two invincible war machines, rampaging through the crowd, and almost eliminated all the Hydra agents in the hall on the first floor in the blink of an eye. At this time, Pierce, who was located in the director's office on the top floor, was also watching this scene. Sure enough, it's a superhero. These ordinary agents with mortal bodies are not their opponents at all. Pierce was not at all surprised that his men were easily dealt with by the two. After all, this is the famous Captain America and Iron Man. They are quite powerful superheroes, whether in the hearts of ordinary people or in the eyes of those villains who do evil. They are both symbols of strength and order. Although during this time, the two and SHILD have lost to the Foundation several times. But Pierce never underestimated them. Instead, he paid more attention to and guarded them. After all, the fact that they have been able to fight against Foundation members so many times is enough to show their strength. To know the information about the Foundation, Pierce had to marvel at the power of the Foundation just by looking at it. As Captain America and Tony, who have always been confronting the Foundation head-on, they are naturally defined as extremely dangerous opponents in the Hydra data. This time, if it wasn't because Fury suddenly knew his true identity, he wouldn't have taken the risk to do anything to Captain America. I don't know who deliberately exposed my real identity to that idiot Fury. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be in such a passive situation. Pierce scratched his hair a little irritably, then growled angrily. For this point, he really couldn't figure it out. Obviously, he had made a lot of preparations just to prevent Fury from investigating his true identity, but even so, he still made a mistake in the end. I didn't expect that someone would reveal my identity to Fury, which would lead to my exposure. Now I can only do something to SHILD without being fully prepared. It's just terrible. Thinking of these, Pierce felt upset for a while, always feeling that all his plans had been disrupted. Obviously he could do better, but he fell short because of this sudden mistake. This 883 definitely made Pierce extremely irritable. And that's not all Pierce has to worry about and get headaches right now. Captain America and Tony are now fighting upwards floor by floor, seeing that this posture is about to smash through the entire SHILD building. Just looking at their actions made Pierce feel angry. Trash. It's all a bunch of trash. Although Pierce had long been prepared for the strength of Captain America and Tony, and when they defeated the Hydra agents in the bottom hall, he didn't care at all. But at least they resisted ability a bit, blocking Captain America and Tony a bit. But these people who came later were simply sending themselves to death. They couldn't even delay the two's footsteps, they just fell at the two's feet in groups, without any power to fight back. It was precisely because of this that Pierce was so angry. 
Even though these two are superheroes, it is impossible to beat all of their Hydra agents like sandbags without even a little power to fight back. This made Pierce extremely angry, and he only felt that these people under him were all ordinary waste. Idiots. I've already said that trying to use them against superheroes like Captain America is not going to work. Just when Pierce was about to be driven mad by his idiots, a voice suddenly came from behind him. Immediately, two people came to Pierce's side. These two people are tall and tall, with a skull mask on their faces and two black clothes crossed together on their bodies. They look like a strong wrestler. The other person was wearing a dark purple tights and also wore a dark purple headgear on his face. Except for a pair of eyes, there was no piece of skin exposed on his whole body. One of these two people is Crossbones and the other is Baron Amo. Both of them are powerful fighters of the Hydra organization and they are also veteran members. They've even fought Captain America once, and they've had pretty good fights. To put it simply, both of them are the existence of the benchmark superhero in the Hydra organization. Neither of them has any special BCCG ability, or they don't have the ability to transform like the Hulk, or have the power to control something. But that doesn't mean they are weak. Perhaps in front of those forces that would destroy a planet at every turn, they are indeed existences that are not worth mentioning. But for this era, which is still dominated by ordinary people, their strength is absolutely beyond imagination. Whether it is Crossbones or Baron Zemo, they all have the same strength as superhero. Swordsmanship, boxing, fighting technique, and even strategic wisdom, etc. They all have achievements beyond the imagination of ordinary people. Basically, they also represent the limit that human beings can achieve without accepting mutations or other abilities. Even with Captain America injected with super soldier serum, they can fight head to head and they are all veteran members of the Hydra organization. They were already at the top of Hydra almost before Pierce joined HYDRA. It's just that now Pierce relies on his excellent results in SHILD and the perfect implementation of the parasitic plan to get the help of their approval. Therefore, after confirming that he would attack SHILD, Pierce immediately invited these two people here, hoping to get their help to deal with Captain America and Tony. You guys are finally here. Now Captain America and Tony are about to kill me, but these trash can't even do anything. After Pierce saw the appearance of the two, he immediately breathed a sigh of relief and then said to the two angrily. Obviously, Pierce was really upset about the incompetence of his subordinates. A superhero is a superhero. It's normal for them to be unable to stop them. Originally, these trash fish were used to deal with trash fish. Hydra's greatest ability is to have the Emperor's miscellaneous soldiers. Even Pierce himself doesn't know how many people there are in HYDRA. This is why it is said that one head is cut off and two heads grow back. Because there are too many people in HYDRA, if you don't pay attention, it will be revived. If not, Hydra would not have continued from World War II to the present. Pierce also understood this point. So although he was angry that those people couldn't even stop them, he didn't really want to deal with them. Because he understands that this is their strength. The general agent of Hydra originally had this strength. Their HYDRA is based on volume so it is normal for them to be a bit short in quality. Crossbones, Baron Zemo may have to take your shot this time. Although Pierce didn't really want to use their power, after all, neither Laigu nor Baron Asakusa belong to his faction. Inside HYDRA, it is also divided into several factions. Pierce mainly leads the Hydra members of the Parasite Project, although this plan actually includes the entire HYDRA, more than half of the members. But they are all ordinary members, Veteran figures like Crossbones and Baron Zemo are not under his leadership. This time it was also because his parasitic plan had achieved unprecedented success, and the entire SHILD was almost controlled by him. So Lai Igu and Baron Peng Chao were willing to come to assist him be. People from other factions will not make people happy even if they win in the end, because it only shows that you are incompetent. Thinking of these, Pierce felt a little irritated. But in the current situation, he has no choice but to do so. Facing the two superheroes Captain America and Tony, these trash fish under him are useless at all. You can only rely on Crossbones and Baron Zemo, two anti-heroes who can stand up to superheroes. No problem. We're here for this. Naturally, Crossbones and Baron Zemo would not refuse, and they came here for this matter. Now that Pierce has already asked for help, they will naturally not refuse. Dang even nodded and agreed to this matter. Then thank you. Seeing that the two agreed without any hesitation, Pierce breathed a sigh of relief. After all, these two people are the veterans of HYDRA, and their qualifications are not as old as them. 
The reason why I didn't want to use these two people at the beginning was also because of this. Pierce worried that when the time came, these two people would not obey the command, but would make things even more difficult for him. But fortunately, it seems that the two of them are not this kind of people, but they cooperate quite well, which makes Pierce feel a little more at ease. I take on Captain America, then I'll deal with Iron Man. Crossbones is Starscream's right-hand man. Since Starscream disappeared, Crossbones has been trying to find Captain America and avenge Starscream. Now that he has finally found an opportunity, he will naturally not be relentless. As for Baron Zemo, it doesn't matter. He came here to help. It doesn't matter whether the opponent is Captain America or Iron Man. Therefore, the two peacefully determine their opponents. You are really peaceful. Pierce originally thought that both of them would want to kill Captain America with their own hands. After all, how much trouble Captain America has caused them HYDRA. These two people should be very clear. Especially since both have played against Captain America and both have a record of losing to Captain America. In terms of emotion and reason, this is a good opportunity to avenge the shame and regain one's dignity and honor. But what people didn't expect was that Baron Amo had no intention of competing with Crossbones at all. This surprised Pierce a bit. Victory is the most important thing. As for who my opponent is, it doesn't matter. The easiest and most effective way to wash away shame is to win. As for what kind of victory, it's also not important. Baron Zemo is a strategist. When HYDRA created by Starscream was still serving the Nazis, Baron Zemo planned many excellent victories. Although the process and means of these battles may not be so glorious, but not so many people care about whether the battle is glorious and how the means are. They all have only one purpose, and that is to win. As long as you can win, no one will care how you do it. No one will care, what method did you use? As expected of Baron Zemo, you're thinking the way opened my eyes. Whether it is true admiration, or false admiration. Anyway, Pierce's words of compliment were spoken. But Baron Zemo just nodded his head and didn't express anything. After all, it was not the first time he had heard similar words. It doesn't matter at all. At the moment, the two got up with crossbones and walked directly outside. Captain America and Tony are about to kill, and it's time for the two of them to meet the enemy. Inside the building of S.H.I.E.L.D. Captain America and Tony, the two are like killing gods. People block and kill people, and Buddhas block and kill Buddhas. Rampage along the way, go straight to the top to kill. These HYDRA agents also showed horror on their faces when they saw Captain America and Tony approaching. Monster. It's a monster. Hundreds of them have fallen under the hands of these two men, but these two people seem to be nothing, still approaching them. Although superheroes are indeed very powerful, they have never heard of superheroes being so terrifying. For superhero, this seems to have existed for a long time. In fact, not many people really understand it especially because the real strength of the previous superheroes was not too strong. Most of them are existences like Daredevil and Spider-Man. The real opportunity for superhero to become stronger and stronger is that Avengers started to form this node. So when these Hydra found out that the superhero they were going to deal with was actually so powerful, they all started to feel a little scared. This is completely different from what they expected. Looking at them, I suddenly felt that we seemed to be in pain too. Looking at these panicked Hydra agents, Tony suddenly spoke with emotion. After hearing Tony's words, Captain America also showed a weird smile. After all, after seeing the power of the Foundation, the two even thought that they were not worthy of the word superhero at all. But now the battle with agents like Hydra has allowed them to regain their confidence. But in the end, the ceiling above the two of them shattered. Two figures came straight towards them. Really? Then let's see it. The end? Chapter 143. Crossbones and Baron Zemo fell from the shattered ceiling, looking at them with grinning faces. For these two supervillains of the older generation, Tony, the superhero of the new generation, naturally doesn't know each other. But Captain America is impressed with these two. Crossbones and Baron Zemo? Captain America looked at the two in surprise. You are still alive? After all, they were old opponents decades ago, and the team never thought that the two of them could still survive to this day and it seemed that they didn't show any signs of aging because of their age, which also surprised Captain America. Since you're not dead, how can I die? Steve. Crossbones stared at Captain America fiercely, his eyes filled with anger and murderous intent. As Red Skull's right-hand man, has been missing since Red Skull's life and death battle with Captain America. Crossbones has always believed that the Red Skull has most likely been killed by Captain America. So Crossbones wants revenge on Captain America. 
wants to kill Captain America and avenges Red Skull. And now the opportunity has finally come. In fact, for Crossbones, the outcome between SHILD and Hydra is not that important anymore. The most important thing is to kill Captain America to avenge Red Skull. That's why Crossbones, who has always only followed Red Skull's orders, is willing to come to assist Pierce. Because he thought it was the perfect time to kill Captain America with his own hands. At the moment, Captain America is also looking at Crossbones, his eyes full of surprise and puzzlement. It was because I was frozen that I was able to survive for such a long time without aging. But what are the Crossbones willing to do? Captain America can see that the physical fitness of Crossbones and Baron Zemo is still at their peak, and there is no decline. This is enough to show that the current Crossbones and Baron Zemo must have some kind of anti-aging ability and rely on this ability to survive until now. It's just that Captain America doesn't know what this ability is. Let us be your opponents now. While talking, Crossbones showed disdainful expressions towards these Hydra agents. Although it is normal for ordinary people to be unable to defeat Superhero, but after such a thing really happened, I believe that any strong person in Hydra will not be happy. After all, it is not something to be happy to see one's subordinates being beaten badly by others in front of one's own eyes. It is precisely because of this that Crossbones is not in a very good mood at the moment. Coupled with his hatred of Captain America, it makes Crossbones' dissatisfaction reach an extreme. Immediately, Crossbones roared and then rushed directly to Captain America. And after Baron Zemo saw Crossbones' reckless behavior, he couldn't help sighing with a headache. Strategy. Strategy. Although Baron Zemo is saying this, it seems that he is planning to act later. But in fact, Baron Zemo had already drawn his long sword and rushed towards Tony the moment Crossbones rushed towards Captain America. Hey, I don't like you old bastards and your old-fashioned way of fighting. After seeing Baron Zemo rushing towards him, Tony immediately complained. At the same time, the power system of the Mark armor on his body was activated immediately, and the whole person was suspended quickly, avoiding Baron Zemo's long sword. It's just that the wall behind Tony was cut off by Baron Zemo's long sword, and the sunlight outside could shine in through the gap. Looking at this scene, Tony was even more speechless and said, I heard you talk quite quietly, but I didn't expect to be the same as you on the outside, a pervert. Um. After hearing Tony's sarcasm to him, Baron Zemo's eyes widened. Brat, it's not right for you to be a rich second generation, and you insist on being a superhero. I'll let you go down to meet your dad today. Although Baron Zemo is a strategist, he is also a powerful fighter. As a hereditary nobleman, Baron Zemo is quite proud of his birth and identity. But because of this, he has always looked down on prodigals like Tony, thinking that Tony and the others are just lucky upstarts. And now this nouveau riche actually dared to humiliate himself, which definitely made Baron Zemo feel angry. I'm afraid you don't have that ability. Hearing Baron Zemo mention his father, Tony also showed an angry expression. Since Fury told Tony about his father, Tony has greatly improved his father, and at the same time recognized and respected his father more. Now that Baron Zemo said this, he was humiliating his father. So Tony naturally felt a burst of fire in his heart, and even roared angrily, then rushed forward. Facing Tony who rushed up, Baron Zemo's face hidden under the hood suddenly showed a ferocious smile, as if he was happy that his strategy worked. Immediately, Baron Zemo held his long sword with both hands, stared at Tony expectantly, and rushed towards him. As long as Tony was getting closer to him, he stepped into his attack range. I will cut off his armor with one sword, and split him and his proud armor into two halves. But just when Baron Zemo was thinking this way, suddenly the power system on Tony's body was turned on to the maximum horsepower and then he rushed directly to Baron Zemo. The speed was as fast as a red light in the blink of an eye. It rushed to Baron Zemo. At the same time, the arc pulse cannon in Tony's palm is ready. Tony only needs to put his palm on Baron Zemo's head, and then the arc pulse cannon will directly explode the heads of the two Baron Zemo. In fact, Tony did exactly that, but there was a little accident. Because in Tony's opinion, his own shot should be able to easily get rid of Baron Zemo. But who knew that Baron Zemo grabbed his wrist just as his hand was about to touch him? Dude, you seem to underestimate me. Baron Zemo was proudly trying to taunt Tony with a few words. But as soon as he said the words, the arc pulse gun in Tony's palm directly blasted Baron Zemo away. Idiot, this is a long-range attack. Tony said to Baron Zemo who had been knocked out and stuck in the wall with great contempt. Yes, he was blown away. And now Baron Zemo, who was in the wall, sneered at Tony. Then he raised the glue gun in his hand. 
Baron Zemo's family has an indissoluble bond with glue. Baron Zemo is a hereditary title. The previous Baron Zemo was his father and one of Captain America's opponents. The former Baron Zemo developed a super glue, known as the most powerful glue in the world, and people who are stuck can hardly break free. Originally using this glue, the previous Baron Rongma gained an advantage in battles with Captain America many times. But in the end, for some reason, Baron Zemo missed in the battle with Captain America and died under the glue he developed. And the current Baron Zemo, because of the battle with Captain America, caused the lake of glue to cover his headgear. So he can only live with this headgear for the rest of his life. But it is also because of this that it can better reflect the power of Baron Zemo's superglue. And now Baron Zemo shot Tony. Immediately, a large group of superglue sprayed out from the muzzle of the gun. Tony thought that the gun in Baron Zemo's hand was just an ordinary gun, so he didn't care. But who knew that what was inside was actually super glue, and he was hit by the super glue directly on the lower body for a while. The super glue is like a spider web, directly sticking Tony's lower body to the ground. What? What is this thing? Tony didn't care about it at first, he just regarded the super glue as a means of restraining himself, and planned to break free of the super glue directly. But who knew? It was only after Tony moved that he realized that he couldn't move at all now. Super glue seemed to connect himself to the ground. Tony wanted to break free, but there was nothing he could do. No matter how hard he struggled, he couldn't break free from this group of super glue with such force. It's useless. Baron Zemo at the moment also recovered from the impact of being hit by Tony, shaking his drowsy brain, then struggled to pick himself out from the wall. Do you know why I chose you as my opponent? Baron Zemo looked at Tony in front of him, and there was a sinister smile on the face hidden behind the hood. Because you're stupid enough, you have never fought against me, but you are extremely careless and underestimate me the whole time. Baron Zemo came to Tony with a long sword in his hand, and looked at Tony with contempt. You are like me it's the same as I said before, it's just an ignorant rich second generation. Do you think you can be a hero and save everyone? But in my opinion, you are just a stupid idiot. Underestimating the enemy is the last thing that should happen on the battlefield, but you did it, a ridiculous Chin Kai. If someone like you met me on the battlefield, he would have died long ago. Baron Zemo's contemptuous words made Tony angry for a while, and now he really wanted to punch Baron Zemo's arrogant face hard. Zero and he did. When Baron Zemo was talking nonsense and delivering his victory speech, Tony immediately punched Baron Zemo with a punch, but he didn't hit Baron Zemo, because the moment he started, Baron Zemo had already avoided it. And he looked at Tony mockingly. Boy, do you really think you can defeat me? When I was commanding the battle back then, you weren't even considered liquid. Baron Zemo made no secret of his disdain and dislike for Tony. In his view, Wong is a waste, an out-and-out -out piece of trash. But relying on the property left by his father and his own cleverness, he started a ridiculous dream of saving the world. In the eyes of Baron Zemo, this is really a stupid act that can't be done in a stupid way. Even Baron Zemo didn't bother to think of Tony as his enemy. A fool didn't matter to him at all. He could kill Tony anytime he wanted. Why do you old guys always like to show off your achievements? Listening to Baron Zemo's disdain and contempt towards him, Tony couldn't help showing disgust and contempt in his eyes. Just as Baron Zemo despises Tony, so does Tony Baron Zemo was full of disdain. It's just an old antique abandoned by an era. You are even Hydra is, and the idiot Captain America is the same. Tony and Captain America didn't deal with each other in the first place, but now they are constantly mocking Captain America. The words are full of resentment towards Captain America, but unlike the simple mockery of Captain America, Tony really looked down on Baron Zemo and the others. A tone full of contempt and disdain pierced Baron Zemo's heart like steel needles. The anger and killing intent in Baron Zemo's eyes also skyrocketed. I have to say, you really have the ability to pee asterisk asterisk as people off. Baron Zemo looked at Tony and slowly raised the long sword in his hand. He thought Tony's mouth was stinky before, but he didn't expect it to be so stinky. Now he was really irritated by Tony, so he decided to make Tony's mouth shut forever. I hope you can talk so much when you get down there and meet your father. Baron Zemo raised the long sword in his hand and slashed it down with a single stroke. Seeing that the sword was about to cut off Tony and his mark armor, a person appeared in front of Tony, an elegant-looking alien in a black robe with his hands folded in front of him. Violence is not the only way to solve problems. The End Chapter 144 The sudden appearance of Ebony Maw startled everyone. 
Whether it's Hydra's agent or Tony and Captain America, everyone doesn't know who the Ebony Maw is. How did it appear in the SHILD building that has been completely martial law? But Baron Zemo knows one thing. The alien in front of him must be very dangerous. Who are you? Baron Zemo sternly questioned Ebony Maw with fear and exploration in his eyes. I am Ebony Maw, she is Gamora, and we are all here to find and help shield Ebony Maw is like an old man. He seems to be in a slow pace. Every word and deed is full of grace. Like an elegant gentleman, but these actions of his fell into the eyes of Baron Zemo, but it only made him more jealous. Obviously an alien, but so understanding. It's hard to say that the other party will not be some dangerous element with ulterior motives. So when facing Ebony Maw, Baron Zemo's heart is actually full of fear and anxiety. This alien in front of him must be more dangerous than Tony and the others. We are S.H.I.E.L.D. Now we are clearing out the internal undercover agents. If you have anything to do, please wait until we resolve the current matter, and then we can talk about it. Although Baron Zemo is absolutely sure that Ebony Maw and the others are extremely dangerous existences, since the other party has already said that they are here to help S.H.I.E.L.D., then Baron Zemo will naturally try to use them. If the Anti--090 fails, there will be no loss. If it succeeds, you can get two potentially powerful allies, and you can make a profit without losing money. How dare you talk nonsense? Although it is said that people who play tactics are dirty, but Tony didn't expect it to be so dirty? Talking nonsense in front of yourself, right? What exactly is going on here should be clear to everyone. Are you from SHILD? Or are they from SHILD? But facing Tony's words, Baron Zemo just replied calmly, Now the entire SHILD building belongs to us. Aren't we SHILD, you two traitors? Many times, one thing is right. How about looking at the truth? It depends on how many people agree with this answer. This is the situation now, SHILD has become Snake Shield. Tony and Captain America, the two original members of SHILD, now naturally became traitors. Reasonable, no problem at all. You be asterisk 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 D. At first I thought I was enough of a jerk, but now I see you. I know that I'm still far from it. While mocking Baron Zemo, Tony was struggling to get rid of the restrictions imposed by the superglue, but even though Tony had turned the power system to the maximum horsepower, he couldn't tear off the superglue on it. Instead, he directly pulled up the floor of the building below him. But the result is the same. After destroying the floor of the building, Tony also got freedom. Seeing that Tony is out of trouble, but he is still bound by the power of Ebony Maw, Baron Zemo immediately wanted to let go of his hands and fled directly from the vicinity of Ebony Maw. But no sooner had he acted than Ebony Maw spoke again. Kneel down. Unlike ordinary mutants, Ebony Maw's ability can be said to be the most powerful under Thanos' command. He possesses psychokinesis, lingualism, and a deep reserve of knowledge. In the follow-up plot, Doctor Strange, as the heir of Ancient One, was also suppressed many times when facing Ebony Maw and could not find a breakthrough at all. Even Ebony Maw controlled Doctor Strange through the spirit of speech and got many secrets from him. In fact, from these points, it is not difficult to see the strength of Ebony Maw. For SHILD, which has only superheroes who have almost nothing to provoke the main beam, Ebony Maw can be said to be a crushing existence. So when Ebony Maw said kneel to Baron Zemo, although Baron Zemo immediately sensed something was wrong and tried to struggle, but in the end he knelt down on the spot because of the strong pressure. What's the situation? At the moment, Crossbones, who was fighting Captain America, also noticed something was wrong here and rushed up immediately. But Ebony Maw has Gamora beside him. Gamora is different from Ebony Maw. Her power mainly comes from the treatment she received from Thanos. The remaining power in her body further nourished her body, making her stronger, and also has a powerful self, healing ability. In addition, relying on these powers and her own intelligence, she has learned almost the entire universe's fighting skills in a very short period of time. It can be said that Gamora is a complete opposite of Ebony Maw. Ebony Maw hardly engages in close combat with any opponent, and he alone can face Iron Man. Doctor Strange, and Wong in the plot without losing the wind. And Gamora will hardly use those fancy powers. Even after taking care of the time gem and possessing the power of time, Gamora will hardly use these powers, but prefers to use her own physical skills to fight and tear the enemy apart. They are two almost completely opposite existences, but they can also complement each other. And Ebony Maw is the strongest subordinate under Thanos, and also Thanos' military advisor. This time the operation brought Ebony Maw, which originally needed to be adaptable, and it was just right for Ebony Maw to come. For these considerations, 
Thanos finally chose to let Ebony Maw and Gamora perform this task together. But Crossbones saw that something happened to Baron Zemo, immediately abandoned Captain America, turned around and rushed towards Ebony Maw. After all, the current Hydra has already withered talents. No matter how many trash fish there are, they are just trash fish. So Crossbones rushed forward almost without thinking, trying to rescue Baron Zemo. But his movement directly attracted Gamora. Woman, get out of here. Seeing Gamora standing in front of him, Crossbones immediately roared, raised his hand and sent Gamora flying. But the instant his hand touched Gamora's, Crossbones knew he might be wrong. This powerful force has even exceeded its own limit. This seemingly thin woman in front of me actually has such great strength. Crossbones looked at Gamora in disbelief. How could there be such a powerful woman? Crossbones couldn't believe his eyes, but the next moment Gamora rushed directly in front of him and punched Crossbones hard in the face. Like Crossbones, Gamora is also a master of unarmed combat. Relying on his own skills, Gamora has defeated many beings stronger than himself. Not to mention a Crossbones weaker than himself. Crossbones originally thought that with his unarmed combat ability, he would definitely be able to defeat Gamora. But who knew that after he actually fought against Gamora, he discovered that Gamora was so amazing. In front of Gamora, the hand-to-hand -hand combat that I am proud of is just like a child's play, vulnerable to a single blow. No matter how he punches or from where he attacks Gamora, the opponent can easily dodge his attack and then give him a fierce counterattack. Crossbones tried several times in a row, but no matter how he tried, the final result was the same. He can't break through Gamora's defense at all, but will be ravaged by Gamora constantly. No matter how you strike, the opponent can easily find the path of your punch and then intercept your fist in advance and repel yourself with a backhand. I was like a child being teased by an adult, completely powerless to fight back. The last time I felt this way was still Gamora. Seeing Gamora fighting so easily, at the moment Ebony Ma spoke suddenly. Um, Gamora, who was originally excited, was stunned when she heard this, but then she reacted again. They're here to control SHILD, not really to help SHILD with its troubles. If they really solve these people, although they can also help SHILD to survive the immediate crisis, but in this way, they will only help SHILD once at most. It is far less valuable than keeping these people and earning a few more meritorious deeds. For this purpose, Kayla should accept the three point calendar. This punch should have killed Crossbones directly but this time it only made Crossbones vomit blood, and the whole person flew out. It directly ran into Baron Zemo who was still under the control of Ebony Maw's speech spirit. Ebony Maw also released the shackles of the word spirit just before Baron Zemo was hit, giving Baron Zemo an illusion that he was free because he was hit by Crossbones afterwards. Both Baron Zemo and Crossbones were directly knocked out by this powerful force and even punched a big hole in the wall, completely disappearing before everyone's eyes. Not good. Captain America watched this scene and immediately wanted to rush to catch Baron Zemo and Crossbones. These two people are supervillains, not people who can simply fall to death from tall buildings. Therefore, even if Captain America wants to chase the two, he can only feel at ease if they are arrested. But just when Captain America was about to catch up, those Hydra agents who were still watching the show before all gathered fire towards Captain America. Although Captain America is a superhero, ordinary bullets can't hurt him, but with such intensive firepower suppression, Captain America was also suppressed for a while. He could only watch as Crossbones and Baron Zemo disappeared from his sight. After seeing the perfect implementation of the plan, Ebony Maw immediately said lightly, Go to hell. In an instant, all Hydra agents stopped shooting. They then pointed the gun to their own heads and pulled the trigger. All the Hydra agents on the entire floor committed suicide, leaving no one behind. After solving these Hydra agents, Ebony Maw and Gamora came to Captain America and Tony with a very kind look. And Ebony Maw also used his own psychokinesis to directly remove the superglue on Tony's body. Although Tony is obviously wary of Ebony Maw and Gamora, but the other party helped him after all, so he can only express his gratitude to the two at the moment. Thank you, but why did you come back to help us? Tony made no secret of his distrust of Ebony Maw and Gamora's 5.6. In his opinion, the unknown origin and purpose of these two people is very suspicious. Although Captain America didn't say anything, it could be seen from his eyes that he was actually doubting the two of them at the moment. We are all aliens in your human mouth. We have lived on the earth for a long time, because I have some special powers, so I can see that the world will be destroyed by some evil organization in the future. Only SHILD can stop this organization, so we come to ask SHILD for help. This feels like bullshit. 
But for Captain America and Tony, it's the best reason. Because they have seen many mysterious events. And as an American superhero, they actually have some chosen ones, with the illusion and arrogance of saving the world in their hearts. So when Ebony Ma said these words, they felt reasonable instead. Now your SHILD troubles have not been completely resolved, let us help you solve all this, and then talk about these things in detail. Ebony Ma knows that SHILDS troubles are not over yet. Both Tony and Captain America were worried about Fury, so they didn't reject Ebony Ma's proposal. It's just that what they don't know is that the Pandora team has already mixed in in the SHILD building at this moment. And behind them, the Witch Heart Demon, Wind Demon, and Water Demon also chased after them after sensing the contract of St. Van Gonzel. A chaos that has never been seen since SHILD was established is about to break out. The end. Chapter 145 SHILD should be completely messed up by now. Let's hurry up and find what we need. According to the plan, under the command of Kane, the Pandora's box team has successfully sneaked into S.H.I.E.L.D. This time their mission is to make a copy of all SHILD databases and take them away. Originally, this task was almost possible because SHILD had already prepared countermeasures in order to prevent hackers from invading the network. In their network data database, only about 80% of the information is stored. All are some routine information, and there is nothing too important. The truly valuable information is all stored in the archives in written form. Most of these are SHILDS investigations of organizations and superheroes around the world over the years, as well as intelligence on some supernatural events. In addition, there are some collections of SHILD, such as the storage locations of Tesseract and other things are also inside. These are the core of SHILD, and they are also things that SHILD must never let outsiders get. Once this information is leaked out, it will bring great losses to S.H.I.E.L.D. It can even be said that S.H.I.L.D.S. success over the years is here. Once other people get these materials, it means that S.H.I.L.D.S. achievements over the years will be shared equally with others, and even make wedding dresses for others. This is absolutely unacceptable to S.H.I.L.D. and even H.Y.D.R.A. But it is precisely because of this that Jiang Bai is interested in these materials of S.H.I.E.L.D. Jiang Bai can be sure that among the materials of S.H.I.L.D., there must be something he needs. For example, the whereabouts of some abnormal objects. After all, SHILD specializes in investigating various supernatural events around the world, and 12 of them must have events about abnormal objects, but they don't know it. As long as these materials can be brought back, the Foundation will be able to start a large-scale hunt for abnormal objects on a global scale. Instead of relying on the clues of exchanging abnormal objects from the system to obtain the whereabouts of the abnormal objects, and then start operations. But don't look at these data are only about 20% of all the data of SHILD, but this is definitely an incomparably huge amount of volume. There is only one way to copy all these materials of SHILD in a short time and take them away. That is to use Kane's humanoid USB flash drive. Kane's greatest contribution to the foundation is a living humanoid USB flash drive. He has the ability of photographic memory. As long as it is something he has seen, he will write it down exactly. Not only that, the hospital has a physical reflection force field. Almost no one can harm Kane through physical means, which also provides protection for the important information in Kane's mind. For these reasons, the original foundation and Jiang Bai's foundation are almost surprisingly consistent in their treatment of Kane. A humanoid USB flash drive used to back up important data and then let Kane do some containment tasks as a member of the mobile task force. It's just that these are things that only appear in Jiang Bai's foundation. In the original foundation, Kane basically only has the role of a humanoid USB flash drive, followed by various experiments, especially for the gatekeeper experiment. Ask Kane to contact an angel and try to enter the place behind him, which seems to be the Garden of Eden. Although the last experiment ended in failure, it is basically certain that the gatekeeper has a certain relationship with Kane. And the gatekeeper is also one of the divinities in the foundation, which is considered to be the most recently connected to the highest divinity. After all, he slapped 682 flying almost killing 682. This kind of strength is already quite strong, even surpassing the false god of 343. It should be an existence that really has some connection with heaven. But about this matter, even the original foundation didn't figure it out, so Jiang Bai didn't know much. I just plan to learn more things through further contact with Kane, right? Under the leadership of Kane, they soon came to the underground database of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because almost everyone when it intercept Captain America and Tony and the others, which instead caused important places like the underground database to be left unguarded. 
let Kane and the others easily enter. And because it is underground, it is not affected by the battle between Hydra and SHILD at all. Abel looked at the heavy iron gate in front of him, raised his hand, and chopped it down. Under Abel's terrifying swordsmanship and strange strength, the large iron gate, which was fully one meter thick, was cut into two evenly like tofu. Nailed it. Although Abel didn't like Cain, he was on a mission after all. So he said something to Cain coldly. As for Cain, he didn't care about Abel's attitude at all. Anyway, it's not just a matter of a day or two that my younger brother doesn't like me, and Cain has long been used to it. The most important thing now is to go in as soon as possible and get all these things. Fulfilling the president's orders is the most important thing. The group of people walked into the database that almost no one was allowed to enter except the director general, as if they were entering their own home. After everyone entered the database, they were stunned when they saw the large amount of materials in front of them like a library. Especially as Kane who needed to read all these materials, he showed a helpless wry smile. The president has never said that there will be so many materials. Although I guessed it, the information cannot be less. But isn't that a little too much? Just looking at these materials, Kane already felt suffocated for a while. Whoever led us among these people, you have this ability. Captain, come on. Iris and Loki looked at Kane with great interest at the moment, their eyes full of teasing and joking about Kane. After all, Kane has always given people a shrewd and powerful look. Now such a scene is suddenly revealed, and this contrast is quite interesting. It's just that this is only interesting to them. On the other hand, Kane really has the heart to vomit blood. Dr. Banner on the side also reached out and patted Kane's shoulder at this moment, showing a carefree and comforting expression. Perhaps only he can understand how uncomfortable Kane is now. After all, as a scientific researcher, he has to face many similar things on a daily basis, but even he has never faced so many files before. So this is too painful, right? What's more, Kane has to memorize all these documents. Even if he has a photographic memory, this is too painful, right? Banner glanced at it roughly. The files here are at least no less than the book reserves of a citizen library. So much information is all put into the head. Won't the head really explode? Banner was deeply curious and skeptical about this. After all, is it really possible to read so much information? And after reading it, will there be nothing left? But soon Banner saw what a real academic master is. Although Kane felt that his brain was hurting from so many documents, he still stepped forward to pick up these documents and flip through them page by page. There are at least a few hundred words on a page. No matter how fast an ordinary person reads it, it will take more than 10 seconds to read it, not to mention that it will take even longer to write down all the information on it. But these files really don't matter in Jiang Bai's eyes. Almost in the blink of an eye, Kane had finished watching. Even Banner wondered if he had read what was written on it. But looking at Kane's serious appearance, he should have really finished watching it, which made Banner even more speechless. Is there really someone in the world who can read books so fast? And can they remember all the contents above? But if you think about it carefully, Kane has a photographic memory after all. It is estimated that Kane only needs to glance at the entire paper to imprint the contents on it firmly in his mind. That's why Kane was able to see so quickly. After thinking about this, Banner felt relieved immediately. Then I looked it up. What kind of information is there? This view really made Banner see some surprising things, such as the scandals of some members of the parliament and the handles and criminal records of the rich. And SHILD has secretly supported those organizations over the years and got those benefits from them. These materials are naturally a big killer for SHILD, but in Zhang Bai's eyes, they are not of much use and can even be said to be a joke. But for SHILD, which needs to benefit from the parliament and the rich, this is the best bargaining chip used to threaten these. Moreover, this kind of activity is absolutely shady for SHILD, which has an extremely bright and righteous image on the surface. So SHILD naturally wants to hide these things. Except for the director Fury, even HYDRA doesn't know how many secrets there are. Otherwise, they won't really care about it, and they will arrange some people to take all the things here. As Kane read the materials one after another, Everyone gradually became numb from being surprised at the beginning. Everyone didn't pay too much attention to this, just waiting for Kane to read all the information here. Then they can get out of here. And just as Kane and the others kept flipping through the information here, the witch heart demon and the others had already arrived nearby outside Shield. It's just that they didn't enter the SHILD building immediately, but set their sights on a girl not far away. The witch heart demon could feel that the girl appeared suddenly. Because after coming to the building of SHILD, the witch heart demon used his power to cover the whole building, 
everything within the main kilometer near the whole building is under the power of Xingguang. But the witch heart demon did not feel the existence of this girl. But the next moment this girl had already appeared in front of him. There must be something wrong with this girl. Although I don't know what is wrong with this girl. But Wu Shima knows that there must be something wrong with her. Damn it. She's just an ordinary girl. Why does she have such a weird feeling? The witch heart demon was obviously curious about this girl and brought the wind demon and water demon to the girl. This is a girl in her teens, she looks very cute, but her expression is quite dull, like a doll. But the witch heart demon can feel the breath of life from the girl. Aren't you afraid of me? The witch heart demon brought the wind demon and the water demon to the girl, but saw that the girl had no clue at all. A little bit of fear suddenly made the witch heart demon feel a little surprised. Under normal circumstances, when ordinary human beings see themselves, shouldn't they run away in fear? Why is the girl in front of her completely indifferent, as if she is not afraid of herself at all? Do you need help with anything? The girl looked at the witch heart demon and seemed to ask enthusiastically. In fact, this girl is abnormal object 2599, a perfect girl. At this moment, she came here for some reason and then met the witch heart demon and the others. Help! Wushima immediately showed a disdainful smile when he heard the words. He is a devil, and the devil of hell, the son of Imo Faith, will need a human's help. But when he thought of the magic of 2599, Ushima stretched out his finger to Feng Ma in the mood of watching the excitement. Then you help kill him. Huh. Feng Imo also showed a contemptuous smile when he heard the words, Stupid. It's so stupid. Do you really think that I will be? Before Feng Imo finished speaking, he saw a 2599, who was still immortal before, suddenly burst out with terrifying power and ran to his city again. The End Chapter 146 Feng Emo was still laughing at Wu Xinma. I feel that the witch heart demon is wishful thinking. How could a mortal girl kill herself? So the moment Wu Xinma gave the order to 2599, he couldn't help mocking it. But who knew? The moment he spoke, 2599, who was originally just an ordinary girl, suddenly burst out with powerful power in his body. This force is like a storm, roaring and sweeping around. For a time, the area where Wu Xinma and the others were located should be fluctuated by powerful forces, and a strong wind was set off. Feng Emo looked at Wu Xinma with disbelief, feeling that he was like a lonely boat being attacked by the strong wind unceremoniously. This suddenly made Feng Emo a little unbelievable. You must know that he is Feng Emo controlling the existence of the violent wind. Now it will be suppressed by this storm, which immediately makes Feng Mo's heart burn with anger. And the current hatred for 2599 has also reached a peak. It seems that the next moment it will rush up and tear 2599 into pieces. What the hell is going on with this woman? Looking at this scene, not to mention the wind demon, even the water demon was surprised. You must know that you have been observing 2599 just now, although the appearance of 2599 is a bit surprising. But 2599 is undoubtedly just an ordinary human girl, there is nothing special about it. But now it has suddenly become so powerful. Even the water demon can feel that the 2599 at this moment already has the power to fight against these great demons. How can that be? The water demon let out an exclamation. He really couldn't understand why an ordinary human girl could suddenly possess such powerful power in the blink of an eye. This is completely against common sense. At this moment, the witch heart demon is also the same. Looking at 2599 with a surprised face, constantly searching for what he saw and heard in hell. I wanted to find even a little clue about 2599, but found nothing. It's as if 2599 doesn't exist in this world at all. You must know that as the devil king of hell, the son of Imo Faith, the witch heart demon has a deep understanding of this world. In the group of gods, there are five abstract concepts, and even the omnipotent universe and life court. These witch heart demons have a general understanding, although it may be just some superficial and hearsay, but this is enough to show that the witch heart demon has a lot of understanding. But now Wu Xinma found that he knew nothing about the girl in front of him, which was even more unbelievable than Wu Xinma found out that 2599 had suddenly become so powerful. It's like that mysterious foundation. It suddenly appeared from nowhere, and it also possesses powerful power. It's amazing. The witch heart demon is not an idiot and soon linked all this to the foundation. Because in his opinion, there is another existence that may be connected with all of this, the foundation. But because he didn't know as much about the foundation as Feng Emo and Water Demon, so he didn't know what was going on. And just when Wu Xinma was thinking that he should deal with this situation, 
2,599 suddenly acted. Previously, Wu Xinma gave 2,599 an order to kill Feng Ma, which is a powerful demon. So 2,599 needs to increase his strength. Therefore, standing in place to accumulate strength, Feng Yimou should have attacked 2,599 at this time to interfere with 2,599's accumulation of strength. But they are all too concerned about where the power of 2,599 comes from. Therefore, everyone was thinking about this matter and neglected to stop 2,599. As a result, 2,599 had accumulated its strength to the peak and directly killed Feng Yimou seeing 2,599 rushing towards him. Feng Yimou seemed to know that he only reacted at this time. The other party was coming to kill him. Damn it! How can there be a crazy woman like you? Looking at 2,599 rushing towards him, Feng Yimou couldn't help but cursed. From his point of view, a woman suddenly looked crazy and actually took the initiative to attack a big demon, which is a fantasy. If it weren't for a lunatic, I really wouldn't be able to make this kind of teamwork. But no matter what Feng Yimou thinks about this series of operations of 2,599, 2,599 has indeed rushed in front of him and punched Feng Yimou. But the moment the fist hit Feng Yimou, 2,599's entire body passed through Feng Mo's body. Idiot. The wind cannot be touched. Wind is an invisible thing, completely different from the earth and water. From Feng Mo's point of view, even if 2599 has great strength, it is impossible for him to hurt himself. Because I am the wind. I am an invisible thing, and I don't want water and the earth to be caught. So in Feng Mo's view, I am the strongest of the three demons. A little human girl wants to kill herself? It's just a daydream. But listening to Feng Mo's sarcasm, 2599 didn't say a word just looked at Feng Yimou coldly, and then punched Feng Yimou with a backhand. Originally, Feng Yimou didn't care about it, thinking that this punch should be the same as the previous one, and it couldn't cause any damage to himself at all. But when this punch hit him, Feng Yimou was directly sent flying. The figure turned into a howling gust of wind, blowing down a nearby tall building, and barely recovered the human form. What's the situation? Seeing this scene, even the witch heart demon was stunned, because it was completely illogical. How could someone blow the wind away with one punch? But now Feng Yimou was indeed sent flying by 2599, and not only was he sent flying, but he was also injured. At the moment, he could clearly see that there was a fist mark on Feng Mo's chest, and the corner of his mouth was bleeding. Obviously, he was seriously injured by this punch. Seeing this scene, the witch heart demon and water demon were even more dumbfounded. As a big devil, but also a devil born from nature, Feng Yimou has the power to turn himself into wind so it stands to reason that physical attacks are almost useless against him. But now Feng Yimou was beaten like this, and it was still a punch. No matter how you look at it, this is a bit too unbelievable, right? So when everyone saw this scene, they were all silent. For a moment I didn't know what to say. But Feng Yimou looked down at the place where he was injured, but couldn't help but burst into anger. Damn, damn mortals. As a majestic great demon, even in hell, he is still a hero. Now in the human world, being beaten like this by a little human girl, how can this prevent Feng Yimou from being angry? You must know that the devil was originally born from sin. Now after being attacked by 2599 in this way, the anger of the great crime immediately rushed to his heart. Dang even roared and rushed towards 2599, as if vowing to tear 2599 into pieces. However, facing the attack of Feng Yimou, a big demon, 2599 did not dodge or dodge and looked confident. He stepped forward and punched Feng Yimou again. At the moment Feng Yimou wanted to turn into a strong wind to avoid 2,599's fist, but the next moment he found that once his body touched 2,599's fist, he couldn't disperse. In other words, I was restricted by this girl's attack. As long as it was this girl's attack, I couldn't turn my body into a wind to avoid the attack. What kind of power is this? Feng Yimou roared with incomparable anger. He couldn't understand what the power of 2,599 was, but since I can't turn into a strong wind to avoid 2,599's attack, I can only fight 2,599 to the end. Anyway, he is also a demon in hell. With the ferocious nature of Feng Ma, even if he doesn't use any magic, he just used the power of magic to constantly strengthen his own body and then had a bloody fight with 2,599. The witch heart demon and water demon looked at this scene neither intending to dissuade them. Anyway, it's not them who are fighting 2599 now, they just need to wait for the two to decide the winner. Whether 2599 won or Feng Yimou won had no effect on them. 
2599 is just a very strange, interesting woman. For Wu Xinma, he is more concerned about whether the soul of 2599 can bring him great power. As for the wind demon, just like old demon, they are collaborators, but they are also competitors. If the wind demon can be made to be like the old demon, neither the witch heart demon nor the water demon will have any objections to it if it dies at the hands of others. Because for them, this is a very good choice. At least this way, there will be one less existence to compete with them for the contract of San Van Gunza. So neither the witch heart demon nor the water demon thought of the king to do something, but just watched their fight from the sidelines. But soon Fong Imo could no longer withstand 2599's attack, because he found that no matter how he attacked 2599, no matter how much damage he caused to 2599, it would be useless. 2599 will recover quickly and inflict more serious injuries on Fong Imo. Although Fong Imo can use his own magic to recover his injuries, but this is also limited. Its magic power is not infinite, but the power of 2599 really seems to be infinite. No matter how he attacks, he can't cause effective damage to 2599. Gradually, Fong Imo began to feel a little timid. He didn't want to fight for his life with a mortal girl. But Fong Imo just wanted to escape, but was directly caught by 2599. No, no, no. Fong Imo was really terrified at this moment. He could only watch 2,599 helplessly, and when he was grabbed, he was beaten violently. Seeing that Fong Imo was dying and was about to die from 2,599's punches, 2,599 suddenly stopped and looked surprised at everything in front of him. It seems that I can't understand what I am doing. What the hell is this existence? Wu Shima looked at 2,599 suspiciously, doubts written all over his face. However, at this moment, a bouncing little rabbit suddenly ran towards them not far the away end. Chapter 147 Although Fong Imo was not directly killed by 2599, his current state may be more difficult for him to accept than directly killing him. Because at this moment, he could clearly feel that his body was about to collapse. Obviously, these injuries should be able to recover soon. But now the wounds on his body left by 2599's attack showed no sign of healing at all and even became more serious. Constantly bleeding blood, cracked skin, all were telling what a terrifying battle Fong Imo had just suffered. Therefore, the current Fong Imo is eager to recover from his injuries. If he continues to maintain this weak state and is still in front of the two demons, God knows what will happen. But no matter how Fong Imo used healing magic, it was useless. The injuries on his body seemed to be on his body. No matter what method Fong Imo used, he could not heal these injuries. Instead, let your body continue to deteriorate. These wounds seem to be self-reproducing, festering constantly, but they are not really to the point of letting Fong Imo die. This feeling of wandering between life and death really made Fong Imo uncomfortable. At the same time, it also made Fong Imo feel uneasy and uneasy. He felt that he should find a way, and he couldn't continue like this. Otherwise, it's really screwed. Fong Imo, your injury hasn't healed? At the moment's Fongimo was already anxious like ants on a hot pot, crawling around. And Wushima also noticed something wrong with Fongimo at this time. Generally speaking, as long as the devil is not fatally injured, it can recover quickly. But now Fongimo showed no sign of recovery at all. This could only mean that Fongimo was fatally wounded, or that there was something special about the wound on Fongimo's body. If you think about it carefully, the woman originally in 2599 is full of unknowns. From 2599 onwards, there was a sudden burst of powerful force, and something was wrong when it directly crushed Fong Imo. It's just that at that time, Wu Ma and the others were only surprised by the power of 2599, but now seeing Fong Imo like this, they suddenly began to think in another direction. The previous order to 2599 was to kill Fong Imo, but in the end Fong Imo did not die. But the current situation seems to be not much different from death. Seeing that it is about to hang up, does this mean that 2,599 has actually completed the mission goal? It's just that her death didn't happen immediately. But would it take a while for Fong Imo to die from the injuries he received? If so, it would be too wasteful, right? Almost at the same time, the witch heart demon and the water demon reached out and grabbed the wind demon. What are you going to do? The moment Fong Imo was caught by the two, he immediately wanted to turn into wind and break free from the shackles of the two. It's a pity that his current body is already in that style. As soon as he had a slight hint, the power of which Heart Demon began to attack his body. Power, everything that can be taken away from the internal wind demons and turned into nutrients for oneself. 
This is the power of the Witch Heart Demon, Soul Plunder. Because the Witch Heart Demon is a soulless demon, so he is more thirsty for the soul. As long as he does not feel satisfied for a day, his soul will not appear for a day. And it is precisely for this reason that the Witch Heart Demon can plunder more power from the soul than other demons. And speaking of a sinful soul, what human soul is more sinful than the devil? They were originally born from evil, and they were born with huge amounts of evil power. So when demons eat people, they will also eat each other. They will devour each other to gain huge amounts of force zones. And the witch heart demon is planning to do this now. And the water demon came up with this plan almost at the same time. The two demons didn't take into account the little friendship in the past and directly attacked Fongamo. If it was before, perhaps Su Fongamo would not be afraid of the two of them. Can't beat but still run? But now Fongamo, who was seriously injured, really couldn't escape. Facing the attack of the two, Fongamo tried his best to resist. But the final result was not the slightest surprise. Fong Mo's body was easily torn in half by which heart demon and water demon. Each of them took half of Fong Mo's body and greedily sucked the evolution from it. Fong Mo's body was thrown on the ground like a pile of rubbish, blood flowed out along the ground, and it flowed constantly as if it was going to dye the whole road red. Feng Ma is a great demon, and his life essence is much, much stronger than that of human beings. Therefore, there is a lot of blood in his body at least for now, it is still flowing out like an open faucet, just like running water. Neither the witch heart demon nor the water demon cared about it. They all knew that the next battle must be a fierce battle, so in order to gain as many advantages as possible in the next battle, they chose to eat the wind demon. Anyway, they will definitely fight Fongamo in the end, so it's better to kill Fongamo right now, so that they can also get strength from Fongmo's soul. Especially for the witch heart demon, he originally absorbs the soul better than ordinary demons. For him, a big demon like Feng Emo is undoubtedly a great supplement. That's why Wu Shima directly attacked Feng Emo. Although Feng Emo was also guarding against the Witch Heart Demon and the Water Demon, after all, he had just been beaten like that by 2599. Even if he noticed the behavior of the Witch Heart Demon and the Water Demon, it was too late. I can only watch helplessly as I fall under their hands, but there is nothing I can do. But when the Witch Heart Demon and the Water Demon devoured the Feng Demon's soul incomparably greedily, they didn't notice at all that the little rabbit had come to the side of the foam demon's body at this moment and began to eat it quickly. A rabbit that can eat meat and is still eating the flesh and blood of demons. Even though this is a white and chubby little rabbit, I believe that no one will think that this is a cute rabbit. If you really want to make a comparison, it should be more similar to the multi-rabbit in our zero. It's just more weird than that, but Duo 2 is so dangerous. Because Duofong will take the initiative to attack people and there are a large number of them. But this rabbit will not take the initiative to attack humans, although besides humans, he will also eat other creatures depending on the situation. For example, 682 was so frightened by him that he climbed up the wall and dared not come down. But because of this, it can be seen how dangerous this rabbit is. It may not be very dangerous for humans, but for other creatures, especially those that are about the size of rabbits, or even smaller than rabbits, the gluttonous rabbit is definitely a terrible existence. Um. The soul of Feng Emo has been eaten completely, but there are still some which heart demons who are still unsatisfied. At this moment, they also noticed the gluttonous rabbits on the ground who were eating Feng Mo's corpse. This guy was attracted by the blood flowing out of the wind demon. Although the gluttonous rabbit will eat everything, even dirt, but if there is a choice, the gluttonous rabbit still wants to eat meat. After all, meat is the most satisfying food, even though a gluttonous rabbit may not know what it feels like to be full all his life. BCDB, but as a foodie, the gluttonite rabbit ate up all of Feng Ma's corpses when Wu Xin Ma and the others sucked up Feng Ma's soul. Even the bones were chewed up and swallowed by it. It seems that for the gluttony rabbit, there is nothing it can't bite or swallow with its teeth. This is also a skill. As the gluttonous rabbits continued to eat, Feng Mo's body was gnawed to pieces. Seeing a rabbit frantically gnawing on Feng Mo's body, Wu Xin Ma was also amazed. What kind of creature is this? Gluttony incarnate? The water demon hesitated for a moment and then made a guess. But in the next second, it was overruled by the witch heart demon. It can't be the incarnation of gluttony. If the incarnation of gluttony really appears, his target can't be the corpse of Feng Emo, but us. The embodiment of gluttony is also a kind of demon, born from one of the seven deadly sins, the existence of gluttony. They are born with an insatiable desire to eat, and they will crazily devour everything around them whether it is demons, humans, or other creatures. 
As long as they are targeted by them, they will die. In fact, Wu Shima also has part of the sin of gluttony. The reason why he has no soul is because his soul has been eaten by himself, swallowed by his greedy desire to eat, so he is soulless. But also because there is no soul, the witch heart demon will not be controlled by his own desire for gluttony. But this is also because the witch heart demon is the son of Emo Faith, and as the demon king of hell, Emo Faith naturally has a way to control the seven original sins. As his son, the witch heart demon definitely gained some abilities in this area. Otherwise, even if he ate his own, he would not be able to suppress the sin of gluttony in his body. So what is this again? Water Demon looked at the gluttonous rabbit in front of him who was still gnawing on Feng Ma's corpse, even gnawed the blood under Feng Ma's corpse and the cement on the ground. The corner of his mouth twitched involuntarily. He has never seen such a greedy creature that can even eat this kind of thing. In this way, is there any food in the world that is not his? Just when the Water Demon was thinking this way, the Tao Jing Tu had already gnawed all the corpses of the Wind Demon and looked up at the Water Demon and the Witch Heart Demon with unsatisfied interest. Neither of them knew what Pobang Rabbit was, but from the behavior of the Glutton Rabbit, it is not difficult to see that this should be a very dangerous creature. So when the Mother-in-Law Rabbit looked at them, the two had already left and hid. It's because I'm afraid of the gluttonous rabbits, but because the war is about to start. The St. Van Gonza contract is in the building of SHILD, and the Witch Heart Demon can feel that the souls of tens of thousands of people are calling him. As long as he devours all these souls, he will become the second devil king, and then he will be qualified to compete with his father Faith. Thinking of these Witch Heart Demons, I couldn't help being excited for a while, and my eyes revealed greed and ferocity. He couldn't wait to become the devil king, kill the old devil king, and control the entire hell. What a wonderful thing! Thinking of this, the witch heart demon seemed to gain a little more strength under his feet, and he had already arrived at the building of SHILD in a blink of an eye. Naturally, the water demon was not far behind, and quickly followed up. Although only the three demons remain he got off alone, but he didn't see the slightest worry. It seems that he is sure that after which heart demon obtains the contract of Saint Van Gonzel, he can calmly get his due share, and even get more. I don't know where he got this confidence from. But seeing that the water demon also came to his side, the witch heart demon didn't say anything. Naturally, the stronger the helper, the better, and the more the better. After all, he is very powerful in fighting now, once he starts to fight in a while. Those people from Ghost Rider and the Foundation are not kidding. Moreover, the witch heart demon also felt that the magical rabbit was following behind him, and it seemed that the target was also this building. What a lively place. Now inside the building, People from Hydra and SHILD are fighting fiercely. Ebony Ma and Gamora sent by Thanos are also helping S.H.I.E.L.D. At the same time, they deliberately, accidentally, release some important figures of HYDRA. At the same time, the Foundation's Pandora's Box team is still recording the information in the underground reference room. In addition, there are demons such as Witch Heart Demon outside, as well as two abnormal objects, 2599 and Polly Rabbit. This place is really not an ordinary mess. Immediately, Wu Shima set his sights on 2599. After what happened just now, Wu Shima has discovered how to use 2599. Therefore, even when fleeing, the Witch Heart Demon wanted to take 2599 away. Now is the time for 2599 to play a role. I want you to help me snatch the contract of Saint Van Gonzale. After Wu Shima's voice fell 2599, he immediately turned around and rushed into the building of S.H.I.E.L.D. seeing this. Wu Xin Ma and Water Demon also followed. The End Chapter 148 In the SHILD building, all the materials comparable to a library have been recorded in Kane's mind. Seeing that Kane was so relaxed, he memorized all the information. Banner was also dumbfounded for a moment. This is a lot of materials in the library. Even if a normal person reads it, it will take several months to finish reading it, right? Kane actually memorized all these things in less than an hour? If I had such abilities, I would have already become the most outstanding scientist in the world by now. Shaking his head, after discarding all these miscellaneous thoughts in his heart, only then did Banner look at Kane with a serious face, and then asked, Kane, have you really memorized all these materials? Kane nodded, and then stretched out his hand to press his temple. Obviously, even for Kane, this is a headache. But Kane is Kane after all. Even though it was a headache, it was quickly settled. Now the president's first task has been completed, and the next step is the second task. This time, Jiang Bai assigned two tasks to the Pandora's box team. 
The first is to get all these files inside SHILD, many of which are used by the foundation. The second is to capture the two abnormal objects, Pu Jingfang and 2599. After coming to this world, Zhang Bai also captured a lot of abnormal objects and roughly studied the situation of some abnormal objects. These anomalous objects seem to like to run to those lively places, especially places where great chaos occurred. Even more their favorite. Although in the world of the Xia Foundation, they are usually found in such places, but obviously after coming to the Marvel world, this kind of situation has become more serious. After all, in the Foundation's world, it's not so much that they like to go to those chaotic and lively places, it's better to say that because they create chaos, when they are found, they will be so chaotic. But after coming to this world, it was obvious that something was not quite right. These anomalies like to appear around these chaotic places. For example, the first atmospheric jellyfish appeared near the Tin Rings base where Tony was kidnapped. The next 682 appeared in Raccoon City. Afterwards, there were even several appearances in New York. This made Jiang by have to suspect that all of this was secretly planned by someone. In other words, there is something abnormal doing this on purpose. In fact, this point has already been seen from the incident with the terrifying old man. The scary old man has actually become a symbiotic relationship with the blood pool, using the space jumping ability of the scary old man to haunt all over the world. And finally, when Chitauri attacked New York, the scary old man also appeared in New York with a pool of blood. What does this mean? This shows that there is a force doing these things on purpose, and it can be used for this purpose. Zhang Bai doesn't think this is a character from the Marvel world. This is definitely a big force from the Foundation world, and they are using abnormal objects to do things. And it seems that these things are not small, but I am not sure what the other party wants to do. And for what purpose did you do this? The biggest suspect at the moment is the Carnal Sect. This sect, which has the two supreme divinity beings of the Great Magician Adam and Altabus, if this sect really plans something in the Marvel world, it must be an extremely dangerous thing. But now Jiang Bai is not sure who did all this? So we can only search for information as much as possible and carry out some corresponding experiments. For example, now Jiang Bai intends to guide SHILD and Hydra to fight and then observe whether Zensu 2 and 2599 will appear here. If they do appear, it means that Jiang Bai's guess is right. There really is a pair of unknown hands operating in secret, planning all this. If this is the case, as the president of the foundation, Jiang Bai must clarify these things. Everyone knows how difficult their task is. Immediately they all looked serious. If the other party really appeared, then I guess it should have appeared near us, maybe? Banner was about to analyze it seriously, but before he finished speaking, he heard a loud noise from outside. Boom! The thick wall collapsed before everyone's eyes, because a figure appeared in front of everyone in the cave. This is... Banner looked at the man suspiciously. Although the smoke and dust dissipated, what appeared in front of them was a little girl who looked weak. He is thin and not tall. He looked at Banner and the others curiously, as if he wanted to say something, but Shin couldn't say it. It's Anomaly, 2599. If ordinary people see this scene, they may suspect that there should be some other people behind 2599. This wall is definitely not broken by 2599. After all, 2599 just looks like an ordinary little girl. Do you want me to admit that a little girl can cause such great damage? This is impossible, right? But the Pandora's box team had already obtained information about the two abnormal objects from Jiang by before setting off. So when I saw 2599 at the first glance, I already understood it. It can cause such huge damage, and it is only possible to be 2599 when she is still a little girl. I didn't expect 2599 to be found by others, and some ways to control 2599 have been found out, but if the target is us, it means that the one who controls 2599 should be the witch heart demon. Kane knows his opponent quite well, and there is only one person who will use 2,599 to attack them. That is the Witch Heart Demon. Because HYDRA and SHILD are now fighting each other, it has already become a mess. Right now, the only ones who still have the energy to take care of themselves are Wu Shinma and the others. It's still daytime, and I can't use Ghost Rider's power. When Johnny heard that the Witch Heart Demon was coming, his face turned dark immediately. The Witch Heart Demon is his goal. At the beginning, Imo Faith promised that as long as the Witch Heart Demon was solved, he would be freed. But Johnny can only transform into a Ghost Rider at night, and he simply doesn't have enough power to fight the Witch Heart Demon during the day. That's why Johnny was in such a difficult situation when he heard that the Witch Heart Demon was coming. Only at night? I don't think so. After hearing Johnny's words, Carter on the side smiled and shook his head. 
Except for you, it is true that other ghost riders can transform only at night, but you are not the same as us ghost riders. Carter looked at Johnny seriously. I have seen some other ghost riders. They are considered to be the wrath of God, a sharp weapon representing God to punish sinners. They can use the power of ghost rider and by angel. And they also have some abilities that are completely different from those of us ghost rider who are bewitched by the power of faith. Carter, what do you mean? Johnny became more and more confused when he heard Carter's words. He didn't know what Carter meant by saying this. What was his plan? But he always felt that Carter's words seemed to be talking about himself. These ghost riders have the same power as you, and your eyes can judge evil, but we ghost riders who got their power from Moto Faith don't have such ability. So do you know what I mean? Johnny was silent for a while when he heard the words, but then he said to Carter, You mean, my power is not given by faith, but because of some other reasons? Otherwise, Carter smiled coldly, Mere faith is a liar, he is a big liar. I have seen countless people who signed contracts with him, but their end is extremely miserable, and all because of faith, Tori. Your power does not belong to faith at all. You are a real ghost rider, representing the wrath of God, the apostle who judges the sins of the world, not faith's slave. Carter had already seen this when he first met Johnny, but at the time, Carter wasn't entirely sure. So Carter just watched from the sidelines, but when Carter handed over the contract of St. Van Gonzale to Johnny, Carter was completely sure. Johnny was definitely not made by M.O. Faith, and M.O. Faith didn't have the ability to make a ghost rider as powerful as Johnny. Everything about Johnny comes from God, from the Medal of Strength, even the hapless elemental demon Lord of Zatanos. But it is absolutely impossible to originate from Faith. Moto Faith is just a processor, using his ability to hand over these things, and then take them out to deceive people, that's all. Carter and the others, ghost rider who belonged to Faith in the past, we're all deceived by faith. They are all just experiments made by Moto Faith in order to get a ghost rider that is completely his own and possess the powerful power in it. And the current results have also been shown. That is Johnny. That's why Carter treats Johnny so well, because Johnny is the brainchild of me faith, and he made it with great effort. If Johnny is taken away from Mo Faith, I believe Mo Faith will be quite excited. And that's Carter's purpose. He wants to take revenge on faith and let faith know that teasing others will pay a heavy price. Your power is not the demonic power of M.O. Faith Door. It's just the restrictions imposed on you by M.O. Faith Door. Don't worry about these now. Don't care whether it's day or night. You need to think. What should you do? Carter is constantly guiding Johnny with words, trying to make Johnny stimulate the power of Ghost Rider in his body. And 2599 has already rushed up at this moment. The order she got from the Witch Heart Demon was to snatch the contract of St. Van Gonzale. So she locked on Kane at the first time and rushed up to try to take it away from Kane. Deed of San Vanganza. Although Kane can be immune to all physical damage and bounce back. But 2599 didn't attack him, but snatched his things. This is not a problem that Kane's ability can handle. Therefore, the moment 2599 rushed up, Banner had already turned into a Hulk and directly grabbed 2599 and threw it into the sky. Immediately, 2599 was like a cannonball piercing through more than tin the ceiling of the first floor fell in front of a group of Hydra agents who were still in shock. These HYDRA agents holding guns are looking at 2,599 in front of them dully at the moment, as if they are thinking about how this girl appeared in front of them same. But the next moment, with a roar, the Hulk rushed up. Like a King Kong, he roared and punched 2599 with a fist. The two fought fiercely in the building of shield. On the other side, the Witch Heart Demon and Water Demon have also come here and found their target, Kane. It's just that there are a lot of people standing in front of them now, and some of them are too dangerous. Why is Ghost Rider able to transform during the day? 1. The End Chapter 149 Chapter 149 The battle between water and fire burned the entire sea. The Witch Heart Demon looked at the Ghost Rider who appeared in front of him in astonishment, his face full of doubts and incomprehensions. He doesn't understand what's going on. It's not the first time he's seen his father's ghost rider. He remembered those ghost riders, because the power of demons in his body could not appear during the day. But now why is this Johnny able to become a ghost rider in broad daylight? Which heart demon, you seem to have been tricked by your father again. M.O. Faith is originally a representative of lies and deceit, so the witch heart demon will be deceived. In fact, the water demon is not surprised at this point and even ridiculed the witch heart demon but listening to the water demon's ridicule, endless anger has already risen in the heart of the witch heart demon. Damn it, 
That'll be asterisk, 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 D. How many things are there to lie to me? The witch heart demon is extremely angry at this moment, and even wants to tear everything he sees into pieces. His betrayal of faith for Moto was not a temporary intention. It was a decision made after a long period of planning. And after making this decision, the witch heart demon has been peeping in the dark and collected a lot of information about Mo faith. And in the end, the witch heart demon set his goal on the human world, on the contract of St. Van Gonzel. As a contract well known to everyone in hell, the St. Van Gonzel contract has the souls of tens of thousands of people, and there is also a deal. Once you get this contract, you can not only own the souls of these people, but also become a person through this deal. Magic 23. That's why the witch heart demon regards the contract of St. Van Gonza as an important means to defeat his father, Mo Faith. But now Johnny suddenly turned into Ghost Rider in broad daylight, which shows that there is a certain intelligence error between himself and his father, Mo Faith. And this error is most likely caused by Faith on purpose, which means that the other party is deceiving him. No matter what your plan is now, but since we have come here, I am determined to win the contract of St. Van Gonzel. Seeing Wu Shinma's appearance, the water demon snorted coldly and then started his own actions. Was the witch for him deceived by Mo Faith? And it doesn't matter if it's a trap that Moto Faith has set up for them. Because there is always only one thing they need, the contract of St. Van Gonzale. As great demons exiled from hell, the three demons have had enough in the world. There are too many rules in the world, and if they don't abide by these rules, they are very likely to be noticed by the strong in the world and then killed. Therefore, their lives in the world seem to be chic, but they are actually walking on thin ice. It is far less enjoyable than being in hell, so the water demon also wants the contract of Saint Van Gonzale, and he also wants to become the Devil King, and then return to hell, kill a Mo Faith, and take hell to become his own territory. Therefore, whether he was deceived by faith is not important to him. What matters is whether he can get the contract of Saint Van Gonzale, and then become the Devil King. This is why he, Feng Mo, and Old Demon are willing to help Wu Shinma. In fact, from the very beginning, they had no intention of working with Xi and Tong. Instead, he wants to discard the Witch Heart Demon after he has used the Witch Heart Demon. Unfortunately, the Witch Heart Demon actually had the same plan. So they didn't sign a contract, they just agreed verbally. But for a demon with a strong contract spirit, there is no agreement to sign a contract? Isn't that something that doesn't exist? Therefore, from the very beginning, the four people who have been separated from each other and have their own ghosts will see each other's death and even kill each other. Now that the water demon saw that the witch heart demon seemed to be a little lost, he took action immediately without delay and directly attacked Johnny. Hellfire, right? Then let me completely extinguish your fire. To say that among the three demons, the one who is least afraid of Ghost Rider is the water demon. Because of Hellfire, in fact, water demons have also encountered it in Hell. Mo Faith generally used this thing to punish those demons who disobeyed him. As a member of the exile, the water demon naturally encountered such treatment. It's just that the water demon didn't think it was a big deal at the time. Although the hellfire has the same effect on him, it can cause damage. But compared to other people, water demon didn't feel that exaggerated. So in the eyes of the water demon, hellfire is not such a terrifying thing. And hellfire is the strongest ability of Ghost Rider, so Ghost Rider is not so terrible when surrounded by water. Seeing the water demon rushing towards him fearlessly, a blazing flame was burning in Ghost Rider's eyes. This is the first time Ghost Rider has seen someone who is obviously full of sins, but is not afraid of him at all. Even the old demon from last time seemed to have no fear of him, but in fact he was still on guard against him everywhere. But the water demon in front of him is really not afraid of himself at all. That's where it gets interesting. What exactly gave him such confidence? Allowed him to not be afraid of himself? Ghost Rider was very curious, but also ignited a stronger fighting spirit. He wanted to see if the demon in front of him could still maintain his composure when his own flame completely ignited him. The water goblin roared and charged at Ghost Rider. Although he wasn't afraid of Ghost Rider, he wasn't an idiot either. He didn't directly fight Ghost Rider physically, but turned into a stream when he charged towards the spirit knight. Ghost Rider looked at the flood rushing towards him. A stern look flashed in his eyes. Boom! Although there was a sound of burning flames, a ball of flames appeared in front of Ghost Rider and quickly rushed towards the water demon. But the next moment, the blazing flame was extinguished by the torrent turned by the water demon, and then the water demon still slammed into Ghost Rider fiercely, knocking Ghost Rider into the air and fell heavily to the ground. I knew that the flame is irresistible to the flow of water. 
seeing that Ghost Rider's hellfire was easily extinguished by himself, and then even Ghost Rider was knocked out, the water demon suddenly burst into confidence. In his opinion, Ghost Rider is no longer his opponent. But at this moment, even hotter hellfire suddenly appeared from Ghost Rider's body, and then he grabbed the water demon who was still triumphant in front of him with his backhand. Look at my... Ghost Rider originally wanted to launch Eye of Judgment directly. But obviously the water demon is also aware of the horror of Eye of Judgment. Before Ghost Rider finished speaking, he took the first step and directly knocked Ghost Rider into the pool beside him. This is a pool in a public park. Although it is called a pool, it is actually an artificial lake. And the water level is quite deep. The water demon pushed Ghost Rider into this pool, just to cover up his tracks, so that Ghost Rider could not find his tracks, and then used the water inside to completely destroy Ghost Rider. Why don't you seem worried about Johnny at all? Kane watched Ghost Rider being pushed into the pool by the water demon, then looked at Carter who was watching coldly, and asked with some doubts. After all, according to Carter, Johnny is the most important part of his revenge against Faith. But now that Johnny is obviously in danger, why is Carter not worried at all? It'll be fine. Carter just shook his head faintly. He is not an ordinary ghost rider. He is different from us. We are all just experiments made by Faith in order to get him. Faith spent so much effort just to get an existence that even the big devil can't defeat. Isn't that a bit too much of a failure? The great demon is indeed a very powerful existence. But at the end of the day, that's all. In front of Moto Faith, these so-called great demons are nothing more than some miscellaneous fish. If Ghost Rider can't even defeat the Great Demon, wouldn't it be more proof that Moto Faith was wrong? The Ghost Rider he values so much is just a waste. I believe that if Moto Faith knew this, he would also be quite uncomfortable. So for Carter, he was not worried that Johnny would not be able to defeat the Water Demon. And if he really can't beat it, then for him, the goal has also been achieved. To make Faith regret and suffer, this is his purpose. This is his revenge for that be asterisk 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 d he once was. Okay, since you have already said that, it means that the problem is not big. Now that Carter has already said this, Kane naturally has no opinion. After all, for Kane, Ghost Rider is just a part of their mission, not a necessary part. If something really went wrong with Ghost Rider, Kane wouldn't think it was too much of a problem. At least for their ultimate purpose, it should not have much impact. Definitely, if it can be solved, that is naturally the best. It's just that now I have more important things to deal with, such as the witch heart demon in front of me. You are from the foundation, right? It does look very different from ordinary humans. After the water demon shot, the witch heart demon also came in front of Cain. He could feel the covenant of Saint Van Gonzale on Cain. It wasn't on Ghost Rider's body as the water demon guessed. In fact, at the beginning, the witch heart demon also thought that the contract of Saint Vaganza should be on Ghost Rider. After all, with Ghost Rider's strength, coupled with his father's orders to Ghost Rider, both emotion and reason should be on Ghost Rider. But the facts made Wuxin Ma feel a big surprise. The Saint Vaganza's contract is not on Ghost Rider, but on this humble man in front of him. Could it be that this man is stronger than Ghost Rider? The witch heart demon looked at Kane with some uncertainty. He could feel an extremely dangerous aura from Kane's body, as if some terrible existence was secretly peeping at him. But Wuxin Ma feels that this peep is very far away even so far that Wuxin Ma is not sure whether the other party is staring at him? What's the secret about you? The witch heart demon questioned Kane. He knew that there must be something weird about Kane. But Kane didn't take the initiative to make a move, which made him completely unaware that he should face Kane. I don't know what Kane's strength and ability are, but even if Kane really wanted to make a move, there was nothing he could do. Kane's ability is physical attack ineffective and anti-injury. Although this made Kane almost invincible, it also restricted Kane's behavior. Kane can hardly take the initiative to attack others, because he is completely non aggressive. But if Kane doesn't do it, the witch heart demon can't do it with peace of mind, he could only confront Kane. This made the originally dangerous battlefield with an extremely tense atmosphere 0.0, .0 suddenly become humorous. But in the next moment, Abel couldn't bear it anymore. Waste of time, dilly dally. Abel roared angrily, and then rushed up with his big sword. His speed was very fast. He was already in front of Wu Shima in almost a blink of an eye, and then he raised his sword and chopped ten times at Wu Shima's head. Seeing that someone made a move, which Heart Demon couldn't care less about confronting Kane at the moment, raising his hand, he grabbed Abel's great sword. The blade that could easily cut through steel fell on the witch's hand, but it couldn't pierce even a little bit of skin. Instead, there was a sound of metal collisions, and even a little bit of spark splashed. 
Seeing this scene, instead of feeling discouraged in the slightest, Abel became even more excited. After a long time, he finally met a powerful opponent. From the very beginning, one of Abel's goals in joining the Pandora's box team was to fight the mighty. But this goal has never been achieved. The opponents they have encountered during this period, although their strengths are not bad, are still far from being strong to Abel. Even if they met the strongest Magneto before, in Abel's opinion, it is nothing more than that. But the person in front of him now really made Abel's eyes shine. The strength of the Witch Heart Demon is very strong. As soon as they played against each other, Abel could already feel it. So at this moment, Abel is very excited and excited, and finally has an opponent worthy of a fight. Strong? It couldn't be better. Zero The End Chapter 150 When facing a worthy opponent, Abel is like a tiger, full of vitality and aggressiveness. No matter who is facing Abel at this moment, he will feel a burst of pressure involuntarily. It was as if the person standing in front of them was not a person, but a fierce tiger. At this moment, Abel was fighting in such a posture. No matter who is standing in front of him now, he will face Abel's attack like a storm. Although the witch heart demon is powerful, he still can't stand against Abel's fierce attack. He can only constantly fight with Abel and test Abel's weakness. But soon the witch heart demon discovered that Abel was like a lunatic who was tireless and painless. Obviously the Abel in front of his perception is just an ordinary person. However, in the battle with him, Wu Xin Ma was able to keenly discover that the other party was not ordinary. This is only reflected in Abel's powerful fighting power, and even more in Abel's tireless and pain-free madness. No matter how the witch heart demon attacks Abel, Abel will not feel any pain. And still using the method of exchanging injuries for injuries, continuing to entangle with the witch heart demon. Seeing that Abel was so crazy, the heart which was also puzzled. He didn't understand what stimulated Abel. Why was he so crazy? Damn it, don't you hurt? You crazy. The witch heart demon grabbed Abel's big sword, and there seemed to be blood in his eyes flickering constantly, like a beast that wanted to eat people. Not only is Abel crazy, but the witch heart demon is also crazy at this moment. Any demon who is suppressed and beaten by humans will definitely become crazy. It's just that the current witch heart demon is even more rage. I saw that as soon as he exerted force in his hand, the big sword was broken into pieces. After that, the witch heart demon didn't see any stop. He grabbed Abel and raised it above his head, and then smashed it to the ground. Boom! With a loud bang, the entire ground was shattered. Everyone in the SHILD building can feel that the building under their feet has sank. This suddenly shocked all of them, completely unaware of what happened. However, the witch heart demon's crazy attack was far from over. Abel was smashed to the ground by the witch heart demon, and before he got up, the witch heart demon rushed up and put his hand on Abel's heart. The power of corruption immediately invaded Abel's body, and was constantly eating away at Abel's vitality. This is the most terrifying state of the witch heart demon. His hands have terrifying power, which can devour the vitality of the person he touches, turning the opponent into a decayed body. The reason why the witch heart demon used this trick to deal with Abel was also because Abel was so wicked. He just tried to kill Abel with countless kinds of magic, but none of them had any effect. Abel was like an immortal body. These magics would indeed cause him harm. It even broke one of Abel's arms, but Abel still seemed to be a normal person. Whether it is fighting or other actions, they are all in a row, and there is not even the slightest problem at all. Seeing this scene, Wu Xin Ma couldn't believe his eyes. Why does this kind of thing happen? Obviously, I should have broken his arm, but he was fine, and he was even able to fight back against him? How did his broken arm support him to raise the big sword in his hand? How did he land this sword on his body? Regarding all of these, Wu Xin Ma was full of doubts, but at the same time, he couldn't get any answers. Because he really can't see any problems with Abel, and he can also see the soul in Abel's body. This shows that Abel is a normal person, a living person. But why can a living person behave so horribly? The witch heart demon was full of doubts about this, but he got no explanation. In desperation, the witch heart demon could only use this trick, trying to directly devour Abel's vitality, thus solving Abel's big trouble. Die. I want to turn your body, your soul, and everything you have into my food. Now it is you. The witch heart demon originally thought that when his power of corruption penetrated into Abel's body, Abel would immediately lose his fighting power, and then fall to the ground to become his own food. But when the witch heart demon was trying to inject his own corrupting power into Abel's body to completely destroy him, 
he found that something was wrong. The power of his own corruption did not swallow even a little life force in Abel's body. It was as if Abel in front of him was not a living person but a puppet, with no trace of life in it at all. But the Abel in front of him is obviously a living human being. What the hell is going on? The witch heart demon was completely dumbfounded and had no idea what was going on. In fact, it is very simple, because Abel's body is not flesh and blood at all, but made of dust. 963 is only under some kind of mysterious power that makes the witch heart demon think that Abel is a living person, just like it is recorded in the Bible. Human beings are the sons of the earth and God's creation. Uncle's body is just a handful of dust, and the reason why he can be resurrected infinitely is because of the sarcophagus. No matter how he died, no matter how miserable he died, in the end, he will be resurrected in that sarcophagus and reappear in this world. This is the horror of Abel. And when Abel died, his remaining body would turn into dust and disappear, which is the best proof. Therefore, when the witch heart demon tried to devour Abel's vitality, he found that Abel's body was like a puppet, empty with nothing inside. It was precisely because of this that the witch heart demon was so angry and surprised. He couldn't understand why Abel had such a strange phenomenon. However, Abel didn't care what the witch heart demon was thinking now. He just roared, then grabbed the witch heart demon's neck, and then pulled hard, even forcibly tearing the witch heart demon's head off. But even though the head has been moved, the witch heart demon still looks completely indifferent, staring at Abel with scorching eyes. Stupid human being. You are the immortal, right? Me too. The End Chapter 151 The witch heart demon is also a regenerative healing factor, and even his regenerative healing factor may be far more terrifying than the so-called regenerative healing factor of people like Wolverine. Because he is truly immortal, there is no such thing as death in his concept. As the son of faith, the witch was born with the blessing or curse of hell. But for the devil, curse and blessing are actually synonymous. When the witch heart demon was born, he was cursed by the entire hell. Countless demons praised him in their mouths and cursed him in their hearts. Under the guidance of M.O. Faith, the master of hell, the will of hell gave the witch heart demon protection. Under the action of these powerful forces, the witch heart demon obtained the regenerative healing factor. He is different from other demons, will be corroded by hellfire, and even immune to the judgment of eye of judgment. Because his soul has long since disappeared, and the desire of the body has devoured the soul. And the body that lost its soul also stopped its endless desire to overeat. The witch heart demon has become a representative of gluttony, symbolizing the greed and desire for food that will never be satisfied. And because of the existence of these desires, the witch heart demon has also become a regenerative healing factor. Under the curse of the demons in hell, the witch heart demon will never die before he gets his first satisfaction. But as a representative of gluttony, how could he be satisfied? So this has formed a dead end. The witch heart demon has become an immortal demon, and nothing can kill him. But this is not a good thing for the witch heart demon. Because he can never be satisfied, Wu Ma has been living in the pursuit of certain things. He is constantly looking for something that can satisfy him, but in the end, he can't get anything. So the witch heart demon became crazy, angry, and even hated everything. Especially the demon king of hell, who hates his father and brought all this to him. Mo Faith. So the witch heart demon decided to take revenge on Faith. He wanted to pull Faith from the position of the demon king of hell and then make him completely desperate. This is the plan of the witch heart demon and it is also the decision of the heart demon. In Wu Shinma's view, this is definitely the best and most effective way. Can let my arrogant father, who thinks that everything is in his calculations, taste what it is like to be teased by others in the midst of applause and trampled in the dirt. Taste? The witch heart demon thought so and the hatred and anger in his heart became more intense. Get out! With the roar of the witch heart demon, the powerful force directly sent Abel flying. Immediately, the witch heart demon's body directly grabbed his head, and then pressed it on his neck. Feeling that his head had returned to the place where he should exist, the witch heart demon looked at Abel angrily. Very well. You have completely p asterisk 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 d me off. The witch heart demon stared at Abel. His eyes were full of madness and extremes. It's the first time in so many years that you can make me so angry, but this is also good. It's time for me to try to find satisfaction in other places. The curse of immortality on the witch heart demon only said that the witch heart demon must be satisfied, but it did not stipulate that the witch heart demon must be satisfied. Therefore, when the witch heart demon was in hell, 
He had already tried various ways to obtain satisfaction. But it seems that because he was organized, even if he wanted to be satisfied from other aspects, the final result would only end in failure. Whether it is fighting, pleasure, or achievements, the witch heart demon cannot be satisfied. And whenever he accomplishes something, all he gets is scrutiny. It seems that for those who have seen his achievements, as the son of the hell demon king, it is definitely a matter of course that the witch heart demon can do these things. On the contrary, if he cannot do it, then there is a real problem. It is precisely because of this that witches hate faith so much, and finally decided to overthrow faith to prove his strength. At this moment, the witch heart demon had already left hell and met a fairly good opponent. This made the witch heart demon start to plan. Should he give it a try? Desire to fight? If you can get satisfaction in battle, that's actually not bad. Thinking of this, the witch heart demon suddenly became interested in the battle between Abel. I will tear you to pieces. Following the roar of the witch heart demon, he rushed in front of Abel the next moment. In fact, Abel's situation at the moment is not optimistic. Because of the previous battle with the witch heart demon, Abel's body is full of scars now. It's just because of Abel's special body structure and mysterious power as an abnormality, Abel still has a strong fighting power even in this situation. But that's all. The current Abel is already at his limit. If he can't deal with the witch heart demon as soon as possible in the next battle, then it is very likely that he will die. But Abel didn't care. For Abel, what he needs now is never a complete body, but a hearty battle. A battle that he has been looking forward to since the moment he joined the Foundation and became a member of the Pandora's Box team. And now the battle with the Witch Heart Demon is obviously quite in line with his requirements. Therefore, Abel ignored the wounds on his body and rushed towards the Witch Heart Demon with a frantic face. He grabbed his broken left hand behind him, took out something from the pocket dimension, and threw it directly at Wu Ma. When these got close, the Witch Heart Demon discovered that it turned out to be flying darts. Seeing the three flying darts flying towards him, Wu Ma just raised his hand and grabbed the three flying darts in his hands, and then squeezed them hard. Immediately, the three flying darts were all shattered. Seeing this scene like a child playing around, which Heart Demon showed disdain and contempt on his face, but he didn't wait for him to throw away the fragments of flying darts in his hand. He saw that Abel had already rushed in front of him, and at the same time there was an extra big sword in his hand. Underestimate the enemy and be careless. You are not worthy of being a battle at all. As Abel spoke, he slashed at the witch heart demon with a fierce sword. Although the witch heart demon tried his best to avoid it, it was still too late, and he was directly slashed by Abel's great sword. A powerful force immediately knocked the witch heart demon into the air, and then fell heavily to the ground. Although the witch heart demon was not injured, not even a little bit of skin was broken. But the anger and humiliation in his heart are growing exponentially. I don't deserve to be a fighter, do I? Wushinma touched his abdomen that was hit, and a look of ferocity flashed in his eyes. You want to die. With a roar, the witch heart demon rushed towards Abel again. I don't think there is any need for us to let Uncle and the Witch Heart Demon fight alone. Watching the fight between Abel and the Heart Witch, Cain suddenly spoke at this moment. I think it's best not to bother him right now. It's just that Cain's words did not get the support of others. Loki sneered at Cain even more mercilessly. You are not afraid of Abel anyway. If Abel really does something to you, you just need to stand still and be a sandbag. But we really have to face Abel's anger. In the current Pandora's box, in terms of combat power, Abel and Hulk are definitely the strongest. Kane is a heterogeneous, too restrictive. Under normal circumstances, they are treated as commanders. So the ones who are truly powerful and powerful are Abel and the Hulk. The Hulk is not around right now, if they really disturb Abel's battle. God knows if Abel will be angry for a while and kill them directly? This is not impossible. After all, Abel is a madman at heart. A war-crazed madman. Forget it then. Seeing that Loki and the others had no intention of making a move at all, Kane was silent for a while. But then it was as if nothing had happened. Obviously, he also understands what kind of personality his younger brother has. If he really disturbs his battle, he may really do some extreme things. After all, for Abel, there is nothing more important than a hearty battle and a strong and interesting opponent. The current witch heart demon is obviously an opponent that meets Abel's requirements. So Kane naturally cannot disturb the battle between Abel and the witch heart demon. Loki also breathed a sigh of relief when he heard Kane say that. This guy finally didn't mess around. Otherwise, he might really go crazy with Abel's temper. The big sword in Abel's hand slashed fiercely on the arm of the witch heart demon. 
This great sword that can cut off everything can't cut off the arm of the witch heart demon at this moment, but it is touching the arm of the witch heart demon at that time. Countless sparks were splashed. After the witch heart demon blocked Abel's great sword, he grabbed Abel's collar with his backhand and threw it to the distance. Just after Abel was thrown out, while the whole person was still flying in the air, the figure of the witch heart demon suddenly disappeared, and the next moment he appeared in the sky above Abel and directed at Abel, show a ferocious smile. Surprise! Saying that, the witch heart demon punched Abel violently, and Abel flew out at a faster speed as if he had been accelerated twice. And the witch heart demon also disappeared at this time, and a magic circle appeared under his feet. The magic circle flashed, and the heart which appeared behind Abel again, followed by a heavy punch on Abel's back. At this moment, Abel seemed to be floating in the air, being constantly attacked by the witch heart demon in the air. It has been unable to land all the time, but is being attacked blindly by the witch heart demon using space magic. Now do you feel it? You trash. Now you know who is the real strong. Which heart demon questioned Abel while attacking him. A more ferocious expression appeared on his face, as if he wanted to laugh, but he couldn't. This, on the contrary, made the witch heart demon look even more ferocious and terrifying. Boom! With a loud noise, the surrounding dust was shaken up again by a shock wave, visible to the naked eye. An SHILDS building has sunk again. It is estimated that it used to have hundreds of floors, but now it only has 80 floors. It can be seen how fierce the witch heart demon is. Now you understand who is the strongest? The witch heart demon trampled Abel under his feet fiercely, although his face still had a weird and hideous look. But it's not difficult to hear from his tone that he seems to be in a good mood at the moment. Captain, you are not going to help Abel? Everyone who had originally told Cain not to intervene, now all asked Cain with worried faces. Loki's face is even more obvious with a bit of uneasiness and apprehension. But also, Abel can be said to be one of the most powerful existences among them. If Abel really died at the hands of the witch heart demon and lost so badly, now that the Hulk has not come back, among the people under them, good Zhao, it is estimated that Cain can save his life, and Iris and Iris may have to die. Do not worry. But the two sides seem to have switched positions. At this moment, Abel looked at the scene with a relaxed face and said lightly, You don't have to worry, I have confidence in Abel. Do not worry? Loki heard the words and glanced at Abel, who was still trampled by the witch heart demon. To be honest, he didn't know that he was already like this. Why could Cain still say the words, don't worry? Could it be that he meant he didn't have to worry? Loki muttered in his heart, but his hands were already preparing to use magic. Although he has already seen just now, the witch heart demon's magical attainments are by no means inferior to his own, and may even be stronger than himself. After all, what he is best at is phantom magic, which is a trick to tease others. But it seems that Wushinma seems to be better at space magic, which is more helpful in battle. This also made Loki worried in his heart. Can he really stand up to this demon in the future? But Kane still didn't worry about it at all. Zhong looked calmly at the Abels at the witch heart demon's feet. This guy isn't dead yet? Then why don't you do it? If Abel died, his body would directly turn into dust. Since he hasn't turned into dust yet, it means that he is still alive. But since he is still alive, why didn't he fight back? Cain was thinking about this problem when Abel, who was stepped on by the witch heart demon, grabbed the witch heart demon's hand and threw it into the sky with his backhand. At the same time, the tattoos on his body also lit up with a strange light, as if countless demons were struggling and screaming in his body. It has been forced to this point? The End Chapter 152 The Top Floor of the SHILD Building Pierce is looking at Captain America and Tony with a livid face at the moment. With the help of Ebony Ma and Gamora, the two are like gods of war who are on the hook, and they are like no one in the siege of a large number of Hydra agents. These HYDRA agents are not the opponents of the two, but at least they can fight a dozen. Even if Crossbones and Baron Zemo couldn't defeat Captain America and Tony, they would definitely be able to consume a lot of their energy and then rely on the Hydra agent in their hands to use the crowd tactics, can also kill Captain America and Tony. But who knew? It would actually look like this now. What the hell is going on with these two aliens that suddenly appeared? Why have I never heard that SHILD is related to so many aliens? Pierce only felt that there seemed to be a fire burning in his heart, which really made him unable to control his emotions. Anger, mania, and an urge to destroy everything he could see in front of him were intensifying. But it's no wonder, after all, before Pierce still looks like a winning ticket. 
I feel like I can win. But who knew what would happen in the end? Seeing that Hydra's agent was retreating under the counterattack of Captain America, Tony and others, and was about to arrive at the place where he was imprisoning that idiot Fury, Pierce felt even more tense. Mobilize all forces immediately, no matter what the price is, we must kill them. Pierce can't take care of much now, he only has one goal, and that is to get rid of Captain America and Tony, and he must not let his hard work for so many years go away like this. Pierce has paid too much for this parasitic plan. As far as Pierce is concerned, he doesn't know how much effort he has spent in it these years, how many plans and plans he has made. But in the end, it was all in vain. If Captain America is really allowed to destroy Hydra's plan, their parasitic plan for so many years will be completely ruined. At that time, I really have no place to stand in HYDRA. After all, over the years, Hydra has provided great support to itself, which is obvious to all. As a result, now I have failed 587 and failed so thoroughly. At that time, among other things, it will only be members of other factions within Hydra who do not like themselves because they have occupied too many resources over the years. They won't let go of themselves. So I can't lose and I can't afford to lose. Yes. Under Pierce's order, these slightly higher level Hydra agents also understood how serious the current situation is. So they all nodded immediately and then went down to make arrangements. This time, I don't believe that you can make a comeback. Pierce looked at Captain America and Tony and Ebony and Gamora on the monitor screen, with a flicker of madness in his eyes. It's right in front. The director Nick Fury you are looking for, which I just asked from those people, is in the front room. Ebony Maw was at the forefront to guide the way for everyone. All enemies that appeared in front of him would be instantly thrown to the building by him with psychokinesis and fell to death alive. And watching Ebony Maw's behavior, neither Tony nor Captain America said anything. Perhaps they were feeling a little unhappy, but now is an extraordinary period and they may not really abide by the rule of not killing in their hearts, let alone others. As long as you don't kill yourself. In this case, the requirements of these superheroes seem to have been lowered a lot. But when Ebony Maw led the two of them to move forward, they suddenly stopped as if they felt something. Um? Captain America was also a little surprised. Why when Ebony Maw stopped suddenly, he saw an armed helicopter slowly rising at the end of the corridor ahead, appearing in front of them and the Gatling cannon and heat-seeking missiles under the helicopter have all been aimed at them. Not good. Be careful. Captain America and Tony reacted quickly and took action immediately. Captain America stepped forward quickly, then squatted down and stood the shield in front of him. And Tony raised his hands, and the arc pulse cannon in his palm was fired immediately, heading straight for the helicopter. Da da da. The Gatling machine gun, Seg, which was braving blue fire, roared and poured its own bullets on Captain America, and two heat-seeking missiles were also sent out directly. However, as soon as the two missiles approached the building, they were hit by Tony's arc pulse gun. There was a violent explosion on the spot. The strong wind pressure and the smoke from the explosion poured into the building in an instant. The corpses of the Hydra agents who were killed by the armed helicopter because they couldn't dodge in time, and some Hydra agents who had recovered their lives from hiding in the corner were all blown away under the strong wind pressure. It was thrown out from a nearby window, just like a dumpling. That's why Pierce didn't let people do it before. Because there are still a large number of Hydra agents blocking Captain America and them in front. If they do this, those people will undoubtedly die. But Pierce can't care less now. It's better for these people to die than him. If you can't solve Captain America and the others now, then you will be the one who will die later. So now Pierce can only get rid of Captain America as quickly as possible, otherwise he really can't even think about what will happen next. Da, da, da. The Gatling machine gun that was braving blue fire was still pouring out its firepower constantly. Facing such a powerful oppression, although Captain America could barely hold on, it was quite difficult. After all, although Captain America's shield is strong, it can block most attacks. When the strength of these attacks was transmitted to Captain America's body through the shield, it had already been reduced by half. But such intensive attacks still made Captain America a little overwhelmed. After all, this is not a small caliber attack from a submachine gun, but a Gatling with blue fire. This powerful attack directly suppressed Captain America. If it weren't for the shield in his hand, perhaps Captain America would have been beaten into a sieve by now. After all, Captain America is just an ordinary person injected with super soldier serum to become a superhero. Before the injection of super soldier serum, even Captain America was just a relatively weak ordinary person. Therefore, Captain America's own combat effectiveness is actually not too strong. Especially among superheroes, 
Captain America's regular strength can be said to be the existence of the bottom, and he can bully those who do not have any mutations in technology and completely rely on their own abilities to become superheroes. For example, Punisher and Daredevil. These existences become superheroes only by relying on their own experience and fighting ability. So now Captain America is easily suppressed by the Gatling cannon on the gunship. Under normal circumstances, Captain America had already avoided the moment the armed helicopter appeared. But now it's different. Ebony Maw writes that the people of Gamora obviously don't know what it is. Since the other party is here to help himself and others, he is his companion. Although Captain America has many problems, but one thing is worthy of recognition. That's how Captain America treats his companions, always very nice, as a symbol of Avengers, and even the whole Marvel. Captain America can be said to be a crucial existence in the Marvel world, and it is the core part. Although Ebony Ma and Gamora are not too familiar with Captain America, they can also see that Captain America should be protecting them. But, is it really necessary? I looked up at the armed helicopters that were still exporting to Captain America, and then looked at the Captain America that was already struggling, but still holding on. A trace of disdain flashed in Ebony Ma's eyes. These stupid earthlings are really ridiculous. Such a crude weapon is actually worth such a big fight? Ebony Ma thought like this, and then thought of it. Captain America, who was exhausted by the continuous output of the Gatling cannon, suddenly felt that the pressure in front of him disappeared in an instant? This is how the same thing? Captain America looked up suspiciously, but saw that the bullets were all lined up at the moment, stopping right in front of his shield and the armed helicopters in the air have also stopped. It looks like a movie screen with someone holding down the pause button. But Captain America is very clear that time is still passing and everyone can act. But this gunship is unable to act. Just when Captain America was full of doubts about this and didn't know what was going on, suddenly a guess flashed in his mind. Dang even turned his head to look at Ebony Maw behind him. Sure enough, the current Ebony Maw was slowly walking towards Captain America and appeared in front of Captain America the next moment. In front of him were the bullets fired by the gunship. Ebony Maw took a closer look at these large caliber bullets, and then a trace of contempt and disdain flashed in his eyes. Perhaps for him, these pediatric things are really nothing. So Ebony Maw just flicked it lightly, and immediately the bullets returned the same way and hit the gunship at a faster speed. Boom! Although there was a loud noise, the armed helicopter bloomed a gorgeous firework in the sky. And because of the attack of the armed helicopter, all the Hydra agents on the entire floor have been cleaned up. Both Captain America and Tony easily arrived at the gate where Fury was being held. In front of him was a gate that was not so much a door as a steel wall. It was originally intended for JRVIS to directly hack into the security system of the gate and then open the gate. But Gamora said no such trouble and took out his big knife. At first, Tony thought Gamora was just bragging. After all, in his opinion, how could such a thick steel door be split open with a knife? Even if the knife is so sharp, but you really have such great strength? But obviously Tony still underestimated Gamora, Thanos' adopted daughter. In the meantime, Gamora came to the steel gate and slashed it down with a single knife. Immediately, the entire steel door opened with the sound of a knife. This? Watching this scene, Tony couldn't believe his eyes. Is there really someone who can cut through a half-meter thick steel wall so easily? This is impossible? But when Tony was thinking about this, Fury inside also noticed these movements. When Gamora cut off the steel door and attracted the attention of the guards, he decisively shot the two Hydra who were in charge of guarding him inside. Agent take it down. Director Nick Fury, are you okay? Captain America hurried up, then grabbed the handcuffs on Fury's hands, pulled hard and broke the handcuffs. Then Captain America pinched the handcuffs with the thumb and forefinger of both hands and pulled them. The metal handcuffs were torn apart like pieces of paper. After all this was settled, Captain America looked at Fury worriedly. Director Nick Fury, what the hell is going on? What the hell happened to SHILD? This is the question that Captain America is most concerned about now. What happened? SHILD is the world's largest superhero organization, even the world's largest, an organization that has always been known as the killer of evil. But now it has been subverted quietly by HYDRA, an evil organization that has been forgotten by countless people. Even the head of the SHILD, Fury, is under control. What the hell is going on? To say that Captain America is not curious would be really unrealistic. However, in the face of Captain America's inquiry, Fury remained silent except for silence. Because he didn't know how to answer Captain America. Could it be possible to tell Captain America that his SHILD is actually a Hydra undercover agent inside and out? 
I have been fooled from the very beginning. So many years, I have not noticed Hydra's small actions inside SHILD. He's the director of SHILD. He also went from a small detective to where he is today step by step. Let him admit this now. It hurts him more than killing him. But now facing the puzzled eyes of Captain America and others, Fury doesn't know what to say. It's Pierce. After hesitation for a while, Captain America finally said to Fury, Pierce is from HYRA. He deceived me. Pierce? It really is him. After Captain America heard Fury's words, not only was he not surprised, on the contrary, he said it was true. This also made Fury feel even more uncomfortable. Doesn't this make him seem incompetent and useless? But just when Fury was about to say something, suddenly there was a loud noise on the ground in front of him, and then two people were seen rushing into the house from downstairs. That's anomaly? Fury could vaguely see that one of them was the abnormal thing called Abel who made a big fuss in New York before. The end. Chapter 153 Fury was relieved to see that Captain America and the others were all here. I just feel like everything is fine. Next, as long as I take Captain America and the others to capture Pierce and get rid of everything, then SHILD will still be SHILD in my hands. Everything that happened today can be regarded as never before. But just when Fury thought so, a mutation suddenly appeared. Right on their ground, suddenly two figures rushed out, directly hitting the entire floor. Stones splashed everywhere, like bullets from a shotgun. If hit by these stones, Fury is sure that his head will explode directly. Fortunately, Captain America was by Fury's side, so he had time to react. With one stroke of the shield in his hand, all these stones were blocked. Thanks to you, otherwise I would be in danger. After recovering his life, Fury let out a sigh of relief and said to Captain America. Then he turned his attention to the two people who were still fighting fiercely, frowned and murmured in confusion. This should be that abnormal thing? Although Fury didn't know the witch heart demon, Abel was very familiar with it. After all, it was because of Abel that SHILDS first operation on the abnormal object ended in failure. I remember Phil Coulson was in charge of that operation at the time, but everything has changed now. SHILD no longer has the majesty it once had, and she is even more miserable. It's really shameful to be reduced to the point where Hydra treats you as a prisoner. Thinking of these things, Fury felt extremely uncomfortable. But no matter how hard it is, things have happened, and thinking about them now doesn't help. I can only sigh and try to calm myself down as much as possible. But at the same time, Fury was also angry with a question. Why did Abel and this unknown person appear in SHILD? How did they appear here? Obviously this Abel has been taken into custody by the Foundation. When Fury said this, he suddenly paused. He seemed to have thought of something and a trace of speculation flashed in his eyes. Could it be? The Foundation and they are here? Fury still doesn't know how powerful the Foundation is. But there is one thing Fury is very clear about, that is, the Foundation must have their plans and insights about abnormal objects. For example, Abel who suddenly appeared now, in Fury's view, the biggest possibility is that Abel has been subdued by the Foundation and has become a part of the Foundation. If this is the case, then the foundation is very likely to be more terrifying than I imagined. Maybe all the anomalous objects that were contained by the foundation before surrendered to the foundation. If this is the case, then the foundation the current strength is very likely to be far greater than I imagined. Thinking of these, Fury felt as if he had eaten a fly. How could such a thing happen? Why is their foundation always able to easily do things that others cannot? Just like this time, SHILD has not even figured out what anomalous objects are and how they should be handled. But the Foundation has been able to contain it and made a game work for them. That's the difference. That's the biggest difference. It seemed like SHILD would never be able to fight the Foundation, but this was absolutely unacceptable to Fury. He wants to defeat the Foundation. He wants to replace the Foundation. This is his goal and his hope. If he can't even do it, then Fury really doesn't know how to guide SHILD in the future. After all, his purpose is to create SHILD as the best and most powerful organization in the world, an organization that can override everything, guard the peace and harmony of the world, and eliminate all possible threats. But now Fury really can't see this goal and hope. It seems that all of my own, these goals of my own are nothing but a joke. In the current situation, I am simply a joke, a complete joke, totally unable to put SHILD on the same starting line as the foundation. This made Fury feel hopeless and uneasy. Director Nick Fury, you said there was an anomaly between those two? 
Just when Fury felt that everything was lifeless, Captain America's nervous voice suddenly came from his ear. Fury turned his head to look at Captain America in a daze, then nodded silently. Yes, indeed there are. The man with mysterious tattoos is the abnormal thing Abel said by the Foundation, but he was taken into custody by the Foundation during the first chaos in New York, but now it appears here again. So I suspect that the Foundation may take these abnormal objects contained by them into its own subordinates. Although Fury was full of bewilderment and aggrieved at the moment, but he still told Captain America all the information he knew. And after Captain America heard the news, his expression changed immediately. Abnormal objects are extremely dangerous existences. So far, I don't know how many people have died in the chaos caused by abnormal objects. I remember that there were thousands of people in the first chaos in New York before. Died in the chaos of abnormal objects, and now the Foundation actually releases this dangerous abnormal object, they really are not a righteous organization. Captain America almost unilaterally overturned the previous speculation that the Foundation was a neutral organization and then believed that the Foundation was an organization full of crimes. The reason is also very simple, because in the view of Captain America, Abel is an extremely dangerous anomaly. The Foundation did not contain such anomalies and put them in permanent custody. Instead, Abel was released. This is already it shows that the Foundation is not a good thing. All speculation is based on the unilateral feeling of Captain America but it is quite reasonable. After all, in the Marvel world, there are many such situations. I feel that the other party has a problem, but I just have no evidence. So I started to speculate, even conducted a private investigation, and finally found out that the other party had a problem. This kind of thing is quite common. But it is precisely because of this that the behavior of Captain America has been developed. Do you feel that you must be able to tell who is a bad person and who is a good person based on your own feelings? And trust your own judgment. Especially now, because of some small actions, Captain America begins to feel that something is wrong with Pierce, and then suspects that there is an undercover agent of Hydra inside S.H.I.E.L.D. In the end, it turns out that not only is there a real problem with Pierce, but there are not only undercover agents inside S.H.I.E.L.D. Instead, the entire interior of Aegis is full of undercover agents. And Pierce is the biggest undercover, the commander of H.Y.D.R.A. This discovery made Captain America believe in his own judgment even more. So with the inherent arrogance of a superhero, Captain America believed that the Foundation should be an evil organization. The reason is simply because Abel, an anomaly, was actually released by the Foundation. However, Fury fully agrees with Captain America's judgment. After all, for Fury, he needs the analysis of Captain America, and he also needs Captain America to stand by him. Otherwise, he would never be able to fight the Foundation alone. This is what Fury must do, and it is what Fury must accomplish. He won't allow himself to fail, never allow SHILD to lose to the Foundation. Captain America, your analysis makes sense, and I think so too. Watching Fury and Captain America define the Foundation as an evil organization in a few words, Tony felt speechless for a while. He didn't actually want to do that. After all, he still hopes that this world can be more perfect, and the relationship between people can be more harmonious. There is not so much chaos and danger in the world. The Earth is still as safe and peaceful as ever. Instead of being like this now, under the threat of aliens, abnormal objects, and all kinds of strange organizations, you are facing the horror of death every day. So after hearing the conversation between the two, Tony couldn't help feeling a little disappointed in the two, thinking that they were just scaremongering. These are some unrealistic things, and they are simply chasing after rumors. But the key is that Tony can't refute them yet. He can only be silent on the sidelines. And for Ebony Ma and Gamora, it's just as good. The purpose of their trip is to make SHILD and the Foundation fight each other to the death. And now the reaction of Captain America and Fury is exactly what they need. So for them, this is naturally the best, the best. Since Captain America and Fury, the two important figures of SHILD, both have such great hostility towards the Foundation, then naturally I can solve these troubles more easily and happily afterwards. Leading the double anti to start a confrontation and fight. Thinking of this, both Ebony Ma and Gamora showed satisfied smiles on their faces. On the other side, at this time, the demon and Abel also came to the top floor of S.H.I.E.L.D. Are you a demon? Looking at the tattoos on Abel's body that were still exuding terrifying power fluctuations, the witch heart demon showed a touch of surprise and amazement on his face. It wasn't until this time that the witch heart demon found out. The tattoos on Abel's body are actually faces of demons. These blood-red tattoos are intertwined with each other. Seemingly chaotic, what are they? But if you look closely, 
you will find that these are the faces of many demons. And under the mutual mixing of these tattoos, the tattoos form a strange and dangerous shape with each other. It's like a terrible existence. Chilling. But Wu Ma is not afraid of this thing. After all, he is a devil. It just made Wu Ma a little puzzled that the person in front of him suddenly burst out with the power of a demon. Obviously, the two sides had been fighting for a long time before, and at that time the other party had no reaction at all. Zero. How could he suddenly have such a powerful demon power now? If it wasn't because the witch heart demon was so convinced that Abel's body was filled with the power of the devil, he would have thought that he had made a mistake? And the witch heart demon still feels that this power is too strong. With the tattoo on Abel's body, each face is a demon, and these demons are mixed with each other, but in the end they form a face with even greater amounts of demons. From these faces, a shaman can feel huge amounts of power. It was as if he was facing his furious father. But this is impossible. My father is the demon king of hell, and this guy in front of me, although powerful, should not be my opponent hand. How could it be so powerful? In fact, in the Foundation's second creation, Abel even had power comparable to the supreme divinity at his peak. And he was able to control the entire multi-universe through the special medium flower, and at the same time defeated the incarnation of knowledge, the poisonous snake, one of the supreme divinities, and sealed the crimson king, re-emerged. Initiated creation. Although this is only the setting of the second creation, there is no such setting in the Rael Foundation. But Abel's weirdness and strength are beyond doubt. Therefore, when Abel exerted his true power and released the demon in his body, even the heart which, the son of the devil king, had to lament the horror of Emperor Abel. Right powerful. Demons? Are you talking about those forces that reside within me? Abel, who has used the power of the devil, is now far more ferocious and terrifying than before, and also more ferocious. It seems that his body is always burning with an unquenchable flame of war, and just looking into his eyes will make people feel suffocated and frightened for a while. Seeing Abel like this, even the witch heart demon couldn't help frowning. Monster! The witch heart demon cursed angrily, but then rushed straight to Abel with a stride. It doesn't matter what you are, you must die today. Saying that, the witch heart demon roared and punched Abel, and then Abel didn't care about the punch, just raised his hand lightly to grab it. Immediately, he pinched Wu Xinma's fist in his hand. You! Wu Xinma looked at this scene in disbelief, with disbelief written all over his face. After all, Abel was so unbearable in the battle with him before. In other words, it is crazy and difficult to deal with, and it is difficult to defeat. But it is not like now. There is such a powerful force that can directly grab one's own fist. What happened in such a short time? Or, does the tattoo on Abel's body really have such terrifying power? Don't worry, you will eventually become part of my strength. Abel looked at the heart which with a hideous and frightening smile on his face. The End Chapter 154 Abel, who had liberated the power of the devil, was like a different person. The whole body is filled with bloodthirsty and madness. Just looking at it will make people feel huge amounts of pressure and always feel that Abel in front of him is no longer a person, but a demon, a ferocious demon crawling out of the depths of purgatory. What kind of monster are you? Looking at Abel in front of him, the witch heart demon's eyes were full of guard and puzzlement. As the devil prince, the witch heart demon couldn't understand what kind of change happened to the uncle in front of him at all. Why did it suddenly change from a stronger human being to a terrifying demon? And it was a demon I had never seen before. Although there are many demons, Mo Faith said he is the devil of hell, but he is actually one of the demon lords. Elsewhere, there are more 183 demon lords. They are also the same as Faith, in charge of one side of the world, with many demons as their subordinates. Perhaps in the world they control, there will be demons that witches have never seen before. But the witch heart demon can be sure that the Abel in front of him is definitely not as simple as a demon that he has never seen before. Although Abel's body is filled with powerful demon power, he even shows the horror and ferocity of him as a demon from the inside to the outside. But the witch knows that Abel is not a demon. He is definitely not a demon, because he still has a human breath in his body, or his soul is still human. Can a human soul dominate many demons? How is this possible? Which heart demon can't understand at all? and can't accept this. There are humans who can control demons? How is this possible? But the facts are right in front of my eyes. I can't help but believe it. Whether it's a monster or a demon, it's just a part of my power. Abel watched which heart demons speak in a calm tone, 
his cold and sharp eyes pierced which heart demon's heart like a sharp sword. Even if he is soulless and arrogant, he can't help but feel huge amounts of pressure. This pressure was like a boulder, falling on the shoulders of the witch heart demon, making him feel suffocated for a while, and even panting was very tired. It doesn't matter what you are, you must die today. This strong sense of oppression immediately surprised Wu Xinma. He knew that he couldn't just let Abel suppress him like this, otherwise he would definitely die in Abel's hands. Now is not the time to care about what Abel really is. Instead, we should hurry up and get rid of Abel. Avoid any accidents that really happen. But Wu Xinma didn't expect that things would get to this point. It's really something he didn't expect that a mere human being would push himself to this point. At that moment, the witch heart demon roared and stared at Abel angrily. A huge black magic power erupted from his body, flooding everyone like a flood. Even though Abel seems to be powerful and almost inhuman, he can only temporarily avoid the edge before this huge magical power. He let go of the hand that had been holding the witch heart demon and then stepped back. But this retreat also allowed Wu Shima to find an opportunity. He rushed up directly and punched Abel hard in the chest. The witch heart demon originally thought that Abel might be quite powerful because of his ignorance of it. In addition, he was frightened by Abel before, and he was even more angry. At this moment, he was like a tiger descending the mountain, rushing towards Abel with indomitable momentum and anger. The iron fist containing powerful magic power slammed on Abel's body like a sanction from heaven. Only a click sound was heard. Abel's breastbone was directly broken by the witch heart demon, and the broken bone pierced Abel's internal organs directly. Blood bubbles mixed with air overflowed from the corner of Abel's mouth and the blood slowly ran across the tattoo on Abel's body. I don't know if it's an illusion or what. It seems that at this moment, the tattoo on Abel's body became more eye-catching. The witch heart demon didn't care about this. His eyes were all on Abel, on how to kill Abel. But before he could react, Abel suddenly grabbed the witch heart demon and then slammed his fist on the witch heart demon's face. It was supposed to be indestructible, and even Abel's great sword couldn't cause the slightest damage to his body but now he looks like an ordinary person, bleeding from the nose from being punched by Abel. This was the first time Wushima encountered an existence that could injure him. The outflow of blood caused Wushima's whole body to shut down, because his brain seemed to be a little unresponsive to what happened. But at the next moment, Abel was like the witch heart demon to him before, grabbing the witch heart demon and throwing it violently, trying to throw the witch heart demon directly on the ground. However, the witch heart demon still relied on its own powerful strength, and resisted abruptly before landing. It was not thrown to the ground by Abel, but now it is very close to the ground. With great difficulty, the witch heart demon stabilized his figure and looked up to the sky. It's just that as soon as he raised his head, he saw a figure falling towards him quickly. Abel jumped directly from the sky, landed in front of the witch heart demon, and then landed heavily on the witch heart demon's chest with a heavy knee. Wow! Wushin Ma's eyes widened and he opened his mouth to let out a cry of pain. Blood mixed with saliva spurted out of his mouth, and then fell heavily to the ground under Abel's weight. Boom! With a loud bang, people in New York felt the ground under their feet tremble slightly, as if a major earthquake had struck. Among the ruins, the witch heart demon lay inside, looking extremely embarrassed. At this moment, his chest also collapsed, as if he would die at any moment. 1.6 however, the witch heart demon is a demon prince after all, and this injury is not enough to kill him. It's just that the witch heart demon is seriously injured now. Is this what it feels like to be hurt? It's amazing. In hell, no matter what kind of opponent you face, the heart which has never been injured, and except for his father, Faith, the whole hell has no opponent in his opinion. So he wants to challenge Mo Faith, wants to defeat Mo Faith. But now the witch heart demon seems to have found a new target, a new opponent worthy of a fight. Abel, right? Go to hell. With the roar of the witch heart demon, a powerful magic power erupted from his body. At this moment, it seems that the whole hell has appeared in this world. The end. Chapter 155 The disgusting demon said to Abel, Now, you should feel very painful, right? I want to let you taste the pain of bone erosion. Saying that, the disgusting demon raised his right hand above his head, and a strong wave of magic power rushed towards Abel. Seeing this scene, Abel knew that he was doomed, but he did not give up hope. After all, this was his world. Although it no longer belonged to him, he could still start over, 
Just when the evil demon's magic was about to hit Abel, Abel suddenly remembered something, and then a burst of golden light erupted from Abel, directly blocking the evil demon's attack. What? The disgusting demon screamed in pain, quickly withdrew his right hand, and then backed away more than ten meters away, looking at the wound on his palm. The disgusting demon gritted his teeth and said, Damn it! How dare you hurt me? I will never let you go. Abel asked with a sneer, Disgusting monster! I remember you said that you wanted me to experience the pain of bone erosion. Don't tell me you just let it go. In Chinese, the disgusting demon said with a stern look in his eyes, Definitely not. My goal is to destroy the whole world. You are just a part of it. Abel shook his head and said, In that case, I will kill you first. After speaking, Abel's figure flashed and disappeared in place, and the disgusting demon was shocked and immediately prepared to escape. But at this time, Abel had already appeared behind the disgusting demon and punched the back of the disgusting demon's head. Boom! There was a loud noise, and the body of the disgusting demon flew out and fell to a distance of more than ten meters. The disgusting demon was lying on the ground, struggling continuously, obviously seriously injured. Abel walked to the side of the disgusting demon, knelt down and looked at the disgusting demon and said, Now, tell me why you want to destroy the world. Pemph! This world should have been occupied by demons long ago, said the disgusting demon. Hearing the disgusting demon's words, Abel frowned and said, Are you really a demon? The disgusting demon sneered and said, Definitely yes, otherwise why would I survive for so long in your human world? I see. Abel nodded and said, But your strength is obviously weak. Why have you lived in our human world for so long? Hearing Abel's doubts, the disgusting demon sneered and said, because there is no magic in your world, that's why I am very powerful. So that's the case, so your current power is obtained by devouring other people's power? Abel asked again. The disgusting devil sneered and said, That's right. My current power is indeed obtained by devouring other people's power. Hearing the disgusting demon's answer, Abel was silent for a long time. Abel looked up at the disgusting demon and asked, If you can tell me how to eliminate your power, then I will let you leave this world and let you succeed. Freedom back? Ha <laughs> ha. The disgusting demon raised his head to the sky and laughed wildly. You are too naive. You can't defeat me at all. I know. Abel nodded and said, That's why I bet you. The disgusting demon frowned and said, Bet? What bet? Just use my life as a bet. Abel said firmly. Ha ha ha. The disgusting devil laughed and said, Do you think you are still qualified to bet with me now? I can kill you casually. Abel smiled and stood up slowly. Now I will give you two ways. The first is to obediently cooperate with me, help me get rid of my old enemy, and then lead the world's human beings to eliminate these devils, then I can consider letting you live, and even help you become the world's most powerful person, strong. The disgusting demon said coldly, The strongest in the world? Do you think your words are credible? Looking at the disdainful expression on the disgusting demon's face, Abel said lightly, Believe it or not, anyway, that's what I think now. After speaking, Abel turned around and was about to leave. Don't you want to destroy my power? Seeing that Abel was about to leave, the sick demon said coldly, Stop, I can trust you for now. Hee <laughs> hee. Abel said with a smile, I know, you definitely want me to lead the whole world to destroy you. Hearing Abel's guess, the disgusting demon nodded and said, Yes, you are indeed very smart, yes. My 623 really wants to destroy you. But if you can help me do those things, I can consider letting you wipe out. My business? What is it? I need a heart. What? Abel frowned and said, Master Disgusting Demon, don't you mean to ask me to dig out my heart and give it to you? That's right. Abel sneered and said, Sorry, I can't do it. Can't do it. The disgusting demon roared, How dare you refuse me? Hee <laughs> hee, why should I promise you? Abel looked at the disgusting demon and asked coldly. The disgusting demon pondered for a moment and said, Your strength is indeed not enough to satisfy me. So, I can allow you to join the Dark Alliance. Wait until I digest the power in you we can work together. One Abel shook his head and said, My name is Abel Statham. I am not planning to join your Dark Alliance. The End Thanks for watching. You can find the next videos in the playlist linked in the info card, directly on my channel, or right here on the screen. And as always, if you have any feedback, feel free to share it in the comments too.